This is Papa Smurf. You're listening to Our Lifestyle, the podcast with ODB and the mayor. This is dedicated to the niggas that was down from day one. Welcome to Death Row. Like we always do about this time. <laughs> yeah, nine, two. Yo, 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 yo. It's Our Lifestyle, the podcast episode 232, a.k.a. OLP. We've rolled in with the chronic intro because one of our homies that's on this episode, he's a big uh, Death Row fan. We'll talk more about it. But, dude, we got Biggity Mike, the mayor. He's back in the catbird seat. He was out gallivanting with Hank, supposedly. But, Mike, are you, or did you dial into the conference? Dude, I'm here, brother. I am here, live and in color. Episode 232, want to give a huge shout-out to our title sponsor, Love what the Custom Car Show production team does. If you haven't heard, we've been talking about it, this weekend in Mobile, Alabama, one of the biggest, baddest upcoming shows is After Hours, and it's at Hank Aaron Stadium. And Mike, he worked back with Aftermath Designs, recently did some very cool awards. I love the tie-in, dude. How awesome was it to see the baseball bats and the baseballs for After Hours? I think... They're going to go yard with those, aren't they, man? Dude, they absolutely hit a home run. I just want one of the bats. I don't care about the balls or anything else. I just want one of those laser engraved bats. I think those things came out really badass. But, hey, the balls are pretty damn cool, too. Yeah, and I know Greg was thinking about this. April 8th, 1974. You know what happened on that day, Miggity Mike? If I'm not mistaken, that is the date that Hank Aaron hit his 715th home run. Dude, you are the man that was playing last week. You nailed it. We got a tick mark Willie update here. On April 8th, 1974, Hank Aaron, really the legend. Of course, he was with the Atlanta Braves back in the day, and you nailed it. 715, breaking the the good old Babe Ruth's record. And uh, really, man, he should still have that record, man. I don't care about the dang steroid monkeys out there. And uh, you know, no, no offense to monkeys, but I mean these, you know, these were you know steroid monkeys. I mean, because they look like monkeys on steroids. You know what I mean? But Bakos, Amy Sosa, oh yeah, Barry Bonds. Yeah, he, even Mark McGuire was a uh, what he you know he was a steroid yes. monkey. So um, you know all of them. But uh, my, one of my favorite players of all time was Ken Griffey Jr. And he really would have had it, I think, if he didn't. Um, you know, get hurt kind of early on, but, um, you know, with some of the, the, the uh, injuries that he had over his career. But with all that being said, after hours, Hank Aaron Stadium, if you're in the region, search Hank Aaron Stadium on Google Maps. It'll get you right to where you need to go. Gallivan on over. It is a nighttime event. This one's not on Instagram, but, of course, it's on Facebook. You can just search after hours. It's going to pop up. And uh, it's going to be real deal Holyfield. So I think it was in May in the past, but it is April 17th this year. So, Mike, dude, this episode we got Tim Davis, a.k.a. TD. Uh, he's good friends, I know, with Jeff Blake, uh, JJ, a.k.a. Jeremiah Johnson. You know, they're, they're kind of forming their own death row label, I think, man. So we've got some cool stuff we'll be sharing uh, photo-wise of that. Uh, super excited, really awesome audio Good dude, really enthusiastic, RA member, got a chance to see him at Sparks in the Park. Of course, he was at Orange Beach Invasion. He reps the scene. He recently relocated, so I don't want to give all that away, so he'll kind of share some of that. He did relocate as far as uh, moving. And, Mike, I think the big story here, um, we're going to talk about Southeast Mini Truck and Nats, but, dude, the big story is you're back in the catbird seat, dude. Uh, why don't you know? I hinted recently what happened. I know a lot of people probably reached out to you. Uh, give it, give everyone an update what you've been going through the last, uh, I don't know, two, three weeks, man. Well, first of all, you said Tim Davis. What a guy. I finally had the privilege of meeting him at OBI, um, this you know, this last OBI. And, man, we had a great conversation, badass truck, um, super cool dude. So I definitely look forward to hearing, um, you know, hearing that, uh, that interview uh, there with Tim, that sit down um, with Tim. But, dude, the past couple of weeks has been, it's been, it's been pretty crazy. And uh, let me tell you some advice, guys. If you get in a high impact rear end car accident, okay, just go in an ambulance. Save yourself a whole bunch of trouble because I tell you what, 
and make yourself a whole bunch of money. I didn't, and I should have. And it's so funny because the lady that hit me, that's exactly what her insurance company said. That's what she told me. I was like, hmm, interesting. So needless to say, my poor 2007 Chevy Silverado um, got totaled. Uh, they determined that the, the frame was bent, which that didn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. I was less than, I'd say, three blocks away from my house. I was at the turn light, sitting there at the turn light, getting ready to turn. And uh, this lady that was going straight in the fast swerves over and bam! And that was it. All I heard was that. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, just definitely want to say thank you to everybody that reached out, uh, checking on me, making sure everything was okay. Um, I'm fine. I'm alive. Um, but now um, we've had the dilemma of trying to find a new truck. Because the trucks are on a, <laughs> they're all on back order. They're all um, on the on the way to the lot or to the dealerships. They're in transit. I mean, and as soon as they get there, they're gone. Now, granted, I'm not. I don't have the OD, ODB money. I could go and buy me that you know that brand <laughs> high country right now. You know, seventy thousand dollar truck. Um, but you know, I got that little, you know, that little Mike Murray money. So, uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, but good news is, is today actually before, uh, on my way home, I got the phone call and, uh, my truck is actually at the, at the dealers. Um, it just arrived today. So, uh, thank God, uh, me and the wife, me and the wife have been sharing a car and it's like, we're 16 again. But uh, that's all right. We've been spending some good quality time together and having good conversations on the way to work and uh, taking her to work and dropping her off. So if I got to have conversations with anybody, it's definitely her. So Not me. But, that's, uh, that's messed up, man. You know what I mean? Oh, believe me. I, I already know every time you try to call me and I don't answer, you know, I get the fifth degree because, you know, I don't have no time for you. And, well, you got, and, you got businesses you know, and shows and gimmicks you know, like and side, accidents like side, and insurance. You're like my side. And you know when you can't make the side piece happy, then you know then you know no, you're in trouble. No, I'll never be considered that. Now listen, you you got a lot to unpack there. One, because he Mike DeMayer is trying to swerve you guys because really uh, he's the one that's uh, stuffing money in the couch and all that deal. But he, um, I tried telling him buy the truck back, you know, make it a long bed, switch it up, you know, go full interior, maybe sw you know upgrade the motor, 2022 stuff go crazy. I couldn't get him to want to, you know, try to bamboozle the the tow truck driver to, to take it off the, the you know, the tow truck, but uh congrats on the new truck purchase and glad that you're okay, of course. The other disclaimer is, okay, don't take metal uh don't take legal advice from Mike or I. You know, we got to throw that out there. So, hopefully you're never in an accident. I know Hank is no, Hank is I, for I hire. H Hank is willing to consult with people to you know he's got all kinds of you know feedback that he'll give you like if you're in an accident things you should do and i was like i heard him talking to some people and i was like man i don't know if i would you know that that stuff's so you kind of borderline legal illegal you know so you know d don't run from an accident stuff like that you know what i mean so well i think he's got enough problems of his own i don't know if he had i don't know if he's capable of giving anybody else any advice legal ad legal advice well Glad right you're now, okay. Like Definitely glad you're okay, Mike. And I uh, just want to remind people that the overview of this episode, including the fact that we have Tim Davis on, is brought to you by Graphics Mafia. We've said it many times. If you don't know, now you know. G-R-A-P-H-I-X. That's Graphics with an X. Graphics Mafia. Look them up on Facebook. Look them up on Instagram. They're also on um, pretty much on, on the web, right? GraphicsMafia.com. If you need stickers for your business, they can get them to you quick. Uh, they've got great uh, prices, and uh, they take care of their clients. If you want a certain type of vinyl, uh, they always got your back. Ain't that right, Mike? Dude. Hey, buddy. Buddy and Ryan, not to be confused with Buddy Ryan, the NFL genius. I, I never thought he was a genius. But Buddy and Ryan, they're good people. We had such a good time down there at Destin for Sparks in the Park. We got crazy, 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 crazy. Stayed out way past ODB's bedtime, but, man, it was a damn good time. So uh, Hank was there. Ron was there. It was it was nuts. But, Mike, we're going to transition into the scene updates. 
And, dude, there's no bigger update for us to share than next week is Southeast Mini Trucking Nationals. I think it's the 27th annual. And, Mike, we have something going down. Talk to us a little bit about the Mini Nats VIP party. Thank you so much to Jason Bell and the team for allowing us to do this. Yeah, we did it last year, and this year we've actually added an extra 50. We did 100, 100 bands last year, VIP. Um, and, of course, we got to give a shout-out to Asphalt Army, uh, Tony Moore, for making those um, VIP badges for us once again this year. And um, they actually came in, and they were badass once again. And so we have teamed up with Hammered Weekend Wear, Asphalt Army, and, of course, OLP. And, of course, we can't forget the DJ, DJ Mays. And um, Sean Rose, we're going to be over there and going to be having this VIP party. Um, Malloy's Barbecue is uh, is going to be making some steak tacos and some chicken tacos for us. And, of course, we're going to have all the fixings as far as chips and salsa and all that good stuff. So the VIP deal this year is going to be the same as it was last year, like I said, but we've added 50 more this year, is um, you come, you spend 25 bucks at Hammered. Asphalt Army or um, OLP, and you're going to get yourself a uh, pass to the VIP party. And that VIP party is going to get you one meal and, of course, your choice of beverage uh, there at the VIP party. So for every $25 you spend, you get a pass. And then you just spend that 25 bucks. You can either spend 25 bucks at each one, and each one of us will give you one, or you go and spend 75 at Hamburg, you're going to get three. Spend 100 at OLP, you're going to get four. Spend 50 at uh, Asphalt Army, you're going to get two. It's just that simple. And, of course, we'll have a couple of them that we are going to be auctioning off because all of the proceeds that from this auction that we're going to have is going to go to the Spread the Love Foundation. And so we'll have panels there to auction off, and we will have other merchandise to um, auction off as well so we can help out our, our good friend um, Sean Rose and uh, help raise some money for Spread the Love Foundation. This year, the, um, uh, he has found a lady that is an actual nurse that has stage four cancer. She works six days a week as a nurse on the front lines, hasn't taken a day off with this whole COVID thing. Only time she takes off is when she goes to get her chemo and then she's mm-hmm. back to work the very next day. So mad props to this lady. And um, don't want to, you know, um, say her name yet, but uh, you'll definitely, you'll definitely know by the time Mini Nats comes. But uh, she's she's filling out some paperwork with Sean and whatnot because it's all legit. And uh, so we definitely want to help this lady that has been there and helped out so many others. And uh, like I said, she's a nurse and she's helping hundreds and hundreds of people um, that have had COVID. And because uh, guys, if this lady gets COVID, she's pretty much done. But she's been willing to take that chance uh, to, you know, try to save other people's lives. And uh, so it's definitely uh, it's awesome that uh, Sean is, uh, is you know, trying to help her out as well. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, not trying to make people, you know, sad or anything. But I, I think it's important, you know, when when I hear things like this, it, it it's a feel good story because, a lot of us were able to get up and do the things we want to do. And, you know, if you're in good health, you know, knock on wood, like many of us are, you don't really even think about things. But, you know, just don't take things for granted. You know, be positive. And, you know, some of the stuff I see on Facebook and things like this, people arguing and fighting and this and that. It's like, dude, it's bigger things to worry about, man. It's like, you know, unfollow those people or put your phone down and, and listen, focus on some positive stuff, like going to mini nats and, and contributing to a good cause if you can. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Mike, the one thing I wanted to mention is last year we were to the right when you come in the front gate. We're going to be over to the same uh, area this year, right? You'll see the big uh, OLP flags, of course, hammered, and uh, Asphalt Army all set up right there. Uh, yes, sir. As soon as you go in, um, you're going to see uh, to the right – actually – when you first walked in, because I know Jason Bell would appreciate this, when you first walk in, make sure you go to the left and pick yourself up a show shirt, okay? You cannot miss where they have them for sale, because if you guys don't get them early, they will be gone. Go and this year, they're going to have hats, they're going to have keychains, they're going to have banners, they're going to have skate decks, 
Um, uh, Joey over at Get Decked is making these gate decks for uh, mini nats with the artwork. They're going to be absolute killer because Joey uh, puts out some awesome, awesome skate decks. We know firsthand. And so make sure you go and get your um, your uh, your show, all the stuff for the show. Make sure you stop by there and pick that up because if you guys don't, it's going to be gone. So make sure you first do that. But to get into the gate, make sure you get your armbands on. And guys, if you didn't register, it's okay. If you couldn't register, it's okay because they got ten dollar, ten dollar spectator wristbands for steal. the whole weekend. That's a steal. Cannot beat that anywhere. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Now, as we're kind of covering some of this, we're gonna bake in some of the key updates for the show. We are going to announce later in the episode who our guest will be for next week, and I think you'll get a chance to hear even more information. But from the VIP perspective, Mike, it's Friday, or excuse me, Mike, from the VIP perspective, it's Saturday. It's from five to seven. And I think when, when people go, well, man, why do you do it, Mike? Last year you had the best, uh, you know, you and I talked, and we had you really had the best spin on it because a lot of the restaurants are going to start packing in. You're going to have clubs. You're going to have families and all this stuff starting to get together. A lot of us, we're not ready to wind down at 5 o'clock and peel out of there, right? And the cool thing is, Mike, keep me honest, the event goes on into the evening. So we have this unique opportunity to stay at the showgrounds, and you don't have, you're not getting kicked out. Right, you can stay and gallivant with us. I- ain't that right, Mike? Oh, absolutely. And who would not want to stay and gallivant with us? Well, with you. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, let's you know, let's split the let's split the hairs here. I mean, they. I mean, really, you're the gallivant man. I mean, the w- rumor has it that that's going to be your debut album you're dropping. You know, there's the rambling man, and then there's the gallivant man. So we got to get you, you know, back on the the drums or the guitars, whatever you play, and try to finish the studio album. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. You remember how you know they got that thing from uh, Kik that said, "Sorry, we're partying." Yes. Well, I got one that says, "Sorry, I'm gallivant." <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. So when you think about the VIP party, you basically go, okay. It's one you get one entry in just by making a purchase. So, you know, you're 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 already planning to come over. You're going to buy the event shirt. You're going to come over from Asphalt Army, Hammered Weekend Wear, or OLP. You, you're going to make a purchase, and like Mike said, you're going to get one badge with the lanyard per uh, purchase. So, if you got two of you, you know, you'll you'll basically spend a minimum of twenty five times two, so a minimum of fifty. The tacos, Mike, you, you had me at the T word. Okay, I'm a taco fiend. And you got to give a huge shout out. Did you see the homie did the video? And in, in, uh, I think you shared it into Airhead Nation, dude. Is it Malloy's? Malloy's. Malloy's. Yes, yeah. And dude, did you see? I you know it sounds weird saying the the butt. Does he say the butt? But dude, it looked good, didn't it? Oh yes, it did. I like big butts, and I cannot lie. Dude, you, you man, you've got a new career, man. I've got to I've got to get you signed to OLP. I know we kind of did the 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 boomerang here because you know one point when you know we're trying to get rid of you now I got I mean with you dropping bars like that Mike we've got to try to get you resigned like an Aaron Rodgers deal you know we just don't have the budget more than likely to keep you on on, on board here man so I, I hope that you just you know keep us in mind you know as you're renegotiating you know with Hank well I tell you what Hank is my agent and he will be in touch he will be in touch very soon with you. And um, from what I, from what he tells me, um, it's not looking good. Yeah. Well, you know, like the old '80s and '90s movies where America's like, we do not negotiate with terrorists. Hank doesn't negotiate. I mean, dude, he's got a lethal negotiation, dude. Like, kind of like Randy Quaid. I know not everyone likes uh, Caddyshack too, right? Maybe not a fan favorite. I loved it. I remember seeing it in the movies with my neighbor '89. Dude, when Randy Quaid comes in with the hockey stick and gets on the table mm. and he starts barking like a dog. That's one of the most underrated performances, dude. I mean, Randy Quaid with the tick mark, man. Really, that's the, hey. that's how Hank negotiates. Let's be honest. Yep. No, he definitely negotiates, and that's why he's my agent. <laughs> and but the one thing that Hank does not like to do is he does not like to negotiate with cheap asses. And oh, right dude. now, apparently, his biggest, his biggest, his biggest right. bitch is his biggest bitch, this is exact words, is that ODB is a cheap ass. And he said that he does not like negotiating with cheap asses. 
I'm so not sure how much long, yeah not sure how much longer these are gonna these are gonna go on um but uh we'll we'll see we'll see what happens well well those are some fighting words man so hey you're hearing this we're gonna have a we're gonna have some words at mini nats you know so let's be honest now listen back you know talking about the vip event the other aspect of it is so you mentioned sean rose he's going to be there he's going to be networking with people giving advice he's got his bead roller out there some of those pieces including what he brings those will be you know part of like you said the uh the auction right one of the awesome things though is you also have dj mays who will be on the ones and twos he'll be my understanding is he's going to have the stuff set up like he did last year in the hammered weekend wear booth and uh, that makes it real awesome because we can do the announcements if we've got anything going on. We've got, you know, if anybody wants to, you know, wish someone a happy birthday, whatever, we've got all the audio equipment right there. But you basically have a DJ event for two hours. You, it's BYOB. We'll have sodas, waters. We'll have the Tiz Akos. We'll have uh, Miggity Mike the Mayor, Is O D Z B Z, His Ink, Rizon. Diz a Miz A's and the whole crew, man. You know, Shiz on Rizzo's. It's going to be going down, but you got to come over to Maggie Valley next week and you got to look for the Mini Nats VIP party again Saturday from 5 to 7. Uh, usually it'll even go a little bit later. There'll be people out there, I think, till like, eh, I don't want to say the time, you know, late in the evening. And it's just going to be an awesome event. So, Mike, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, we'll also have a photo opportunity with our backdrop. Uh, we we took some really cool photos last year. We had the opportunity. We tried to do all four corners of the country. I think we couldn't find the homie from Cali. He did listen. He drove the Cadillac from Cali. But last year we had Washington. We had California. We had Massachusetts, the big homie. And then we had Florida, of course. So we literally had all four corners of the country right there that descended upon, not Hill Valley, but Maggie Valley, North Carolina, Southeast Mini Nats, it's going to be on and popping, Mike. I don't know what else to say. Well, I tell you this. Let me make this clear for everybody. Whoever does not understand ODB-ish, okay, that was Hank, that was Ron Perkins, that was the Asphalt Army family. That Tis was only Mike. Is or, that's right. Yeah, and then that was Jason Ballard and Mike Murray. Um, and Sean Rose, we're going to all be out there at the VIP party. So come out and oh, can't get DJ Mays. So all that is this, Oz, this, Oz, this, or whatever he said, that's who's really going to be out you're there. Not a true, didn't you're not a true wrestling fan, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want to, uh, we want to do, we do want to thank again, Tony Moore at Asphalt Army. We recently had him on as a guest. Mike, you mentioned it earlier. I know Blake Moore, his brother, good dude, uh, with his lady. Uh, both of the wives will be out there. The parents, uh, they're good people. So Asphalt Army, he uh, actually designed the badges and he handled uh, sending those, you know, sending off for those to have those mailed in. So you kind of get that also the keepsake. I'll be honest, I don't even have one from last year. So it's kind of that extra thing that you get. So, uh, you know, you get the, the badge, you get the lanyard, you get the awesome meal, you get the drink, you get the DJ party, the photo op. Biz like the mayor there. It's just going down. It's going to be awesome. All you got to do is spend a minimum twenty five. You have to ask for the badge, and uh, you're in. You know, you, you're in like Flint. I think is how they say it. So, Southeast Money Truck exactly. and Nationals. Uh, we'll have you a little bit more next week, but that's the bulk of it. And hey, Jay, you know what? Talk about Asphalt Army. They just dropped tandems and tilt beds shirt, and I can't wait to get that at Mini Nats because it will be available there at mini nets so i know i'm buying one so make sure you guys pick one up as well and support the best family in the mini truck scene asphalt army great people man now i also want to give a huge shout out to garage gear clothing now garage gear they do get set up on the other side so they have been going i know and setting up even longer than we have there garage gear clothing is going to be down towards the stage side typically where they're set up Go down there, let Lonnie, Radar, and team, Crystal, I know she's running the show over there, let them know that oh, that you're down with OLP and they will take care of you, okay? So you have plenty of opportunity, whether you're going right to Jason Bell and the tent there for the event stuff, 
we just uh, kind of went through the three opportunities that you have down on our side. But if you're going to go anywhere else, you got to go to Garage Gear Clothing. If you're not going to be at the event, go to garagegearclothing.com, and they have free shipping. It's one of the only brands that I know, Mike, that offers free shipping in the continental United States. It might be Hawaii and Alaska. I know Hank will sometimes go out there on a bender and then try to order stuff and then you know complain about the shipping. I don't know how all that always works out, but um, how can you complain about the shipping, Mike? It's free. You know what I mean? But that's how Hank tries to spend stuff and get an extra you know, koozie and stuff. I'm like, come on, man. You know, but you know he does it for the love of the scene. So big ups to Garage Gear Clothing, Mike. The street trucks. So next week we'll go a little bit more in depth here. I'm lucky to have one of the first issues in hand of the new street trucks magazine, May of 2021. And Mike, you know whose trucks on the cover, homie? Oh yeah. Let's tell tell everybody who doesn't know Jay. Shout out to Billy Bob, previous guest. Obviously, he's got Billy Bob, his own podcast. So make sure you go out there and check it out. The awesome thing about this is we're not even 60 days, give or take. Not even We're like, we're like a week shy of 60 days from Lone Star Throwdown, one of our favorite shows of the year. 10th anniversary was just back in February. Well, February, if I remember correctly, it was Sunday night after the show. Not stock photo, John Jackson. They, they took a little ride. I know Hammered was there on site, some of the other Pacific Northwest guys, and they shot the truck, Billy Bob's truck. Dude, not even 60 days, Mike, from, uh, from debut slash photo shoot right there at that little cool old school gas station to cover, dude. I mean, that's a story right there. Congratulations. Won't share a lot more, but what I'll tell you is, including that cover, there are six mini truck features in there they should have just made it the mini truck and spectacular because there's really there's seven features in there and six of them are minis mike so i have to thank street trucks i know chris and nicole have have asked in different facebook groups what do you want to see more of we constantly see the word minis or the two words mini trucks guess what they're delivering okay so go out, send that little snail mail piece back to you know make sure Mike stays employed or streettrucksmag.com. Scroll to the bottom, tap on subscribe, and subscribe the new school way. But listen, if you're a subscriber and you get the thing in the mail that says your subscription's pretty much almost up, Mike, what are they supposed to do with that? Well, if your subscription is almost up, then that means that you need to go into the magazine and pull out that little piece of paper. Okay, and fill out the paperwork and send it back in through the mail because, like Jay said, keeps me a job. So uh, you can get that new subscription because these new subscription prices are pretty damn cheap. And uh, there's no reason why you can't subscribe and support Street Trucks Magazine. And if nothing else, YouTube, follow them there or on Facebook. They have over a million likes on their Facebook page. Their YouTube is on the rise. And of course, now, if you've been uh, checking them out on social media, you'll see that they have a fifteen hundred dollars first place prize, and this is at the their next event, the Stage One uh, Diesel Works and Street Trucks, or excuse me, Diesel World versus Street Trucks, and that event is going down April twenty fourth at the Sacramento Raceway. So they're going to be live streaming there, and then we'll be live streaming from Relaxing in the Park, St. Louis, if I remember correctly. That's the next event. So Street Trucks, big ups to them. And the last few scene updates that I wanted to cover, Mike, I know the homie Tim Gilbert, Negative Camber, Florida, one of the original Negative Camber, Florida members, big ups, a real OG, great dude. He sold his mini truck, his amazing Toyota. Now, he won, he's won an award you know, before from OLP. He's won other awards with it. That's, of course, not why he built it. But that amazing truck with the red guts, so to speak, he did go ahead, Mike, and he punted it. I know he wanted to keep it, but he's also probably, you know, he wants to do something different, and he's always built some cool stuff over the years, so I'm excited for him, and, and congratulations for the sale. It went to a guy in Georgia. I know the guy's already got it laced up with his uh, with their truck club logo on it, and uh, congratulations to them. Oh, I did not know that. Good. Well, they got themselves a badass truck, that's for damn sure. 
Yes, sir. Also, I wanted to, I know Jimmy's running customs. They're gearing up to be building a lot of chassis here real soon with some cool projects. So I saw that was out there. Uh, I saw that Beth and Rich, they had a great job. They did a great job at the prom. So that event uh, went down and it seems like it went without a hitch. A lot of people had a good time. Some folks asked why we weren't there. And, you know, I'll tell you, I don't, um, I have to be very selective on what I can go to. Like, it's already going to be tough. Uh, a lot of these shows I'm going to, I'm peeling out of work on a Friday, driving 8, 10, 12 hours. So the few that I'm going to be able to fly to, it's not going to be easy. So that's really the reason why I wasn't there. But I want to say congratulations to them for having a killer event. And then, Mike, I don't know if you did see, Ron has gallivanted back to the West Coast. But I think Hank was, I don't know if you want to call it stressed, overworked, you know, kind of doing a Dennis Rodman. Remember when he was with the Bulls and he went to film and said, yo, man, I need a weekend away. Just let me let me hit Vegas for like a, a binge. I'll be back next week. Don't count me out. And Phil Jackson was smart enough to go, all right, timeout for Dennis. Let him go do the Gallivant deal. They kind of talked about it on the, you know, the, the 10-part series that aired last year, right? I think Hank took a, a note out of Dennis Rodman's book and he's basically went to Ron and said, hey, listen, man, I need a little bit of a, some time off, do a little bender. And who better to do that with than DJ Mays, dude? That's always doing the sets on Twitch. DJ Mays, the man, he's been gallivanting around with him. And I know that um, they were over even <laughs> they were they were at the goal, the archway. So, uh, you know, he's he's out there, man. He's hustling, bro. Yeah. Let's just hope that DJ Mays doesn't get sucked in to that uh that uh that hank put you know hank does and gets uh dj mays in any trouble so let's hope that uh dj mays knows what he's doing by having hank stay with him for uh for a couple weeks yeah he'll sneak the wallet you know he'll he, i mean he's done it before he'll take the credit card next thing you know you're getting calls you know you're over your limit i mean there's no end to what hank will do so but you know everybody appreciates hank you know he kind of he keeps it og hammered hank so you know, we keep him around, and hopefully, you know, everything will be good up there. We'll have to wait for DJ Mays to give us an update soon. <laughs> and I think that's all the main uh, key updates that we wanted to show uh, or wanted to cover this week. Now, again, I want to remind you that the scene updates are brought to you by Garage Gear Clothing. You can visit garagegearclothing.com or go to one of these national events like Lone Star Throwdown, like Mini Nats, like Scraping the Coast. Go by the booth. Let them know OLP sent you. They will take care of you in one form or fashion somehow, okay? But Garage Gear Clothing, get ready for the holidays now. Get out there and make a purchase. Everything from minis, the side-by-sides, and oh, by the way, full sizes on the rise, and dualies. They've got it on shirts, kids, women's, adults, you name it. All right, Mike, uh, we got the key show update. So we talked a lot about Southeast Mini Nats. We're going to actually announce now who we're going to have on next week now we've got a few interviews already in the can so to speak but the audio for next week will be jason bell and mike you'd be hard pressed to find a better guy a better show promoter if you will but a better guy in the scene than our homie jason bell and he's going to come on next week we've got the audio pretty much wrapped up and that uh, he will share some of the key last-minute show updates that everybody needs to know, Mike. Oh, absolutely, because I'm sure one of the first things he's going to say is, because I know this firsthand, I think me and you both were right there when this went down. It doesn't matter who you are. Make sure you have your ticket in hand to get you in that vehicle and through that gate to get on that show field. Do not forget those tickets. You must have your ticket in hand. Don't try to put it on a phone. Don't try to have a photocopy. Make sure you have your actual ticket. Yeah, and what I would recommend, I mean, we're a week away. Some of you out there, you know, I tend to forget some things here and there. I mean, put them in an envelope, write mini nats, whatever you got to do. Go put it, I mean, if you know you're taking your rig or you're driving your mini down there, go put it in your glove box. If you've got a lockable glove box like I do, lock that mother. Just make sure you do not forget it, okay? You know, you don't want to drive 100 miles, 200 miles for me, you know, 10 hours and be like, oh, yeah, you know, and asking the wife to text a photo, this and that, it ain't going to work. So, like I said, man, just have your ticket ready. 
be ready for Southeast Mini Trucking Nationals next weekend. And again, next week, Jay Bell is going to be on to talk a little bit about it. Now, Mike, we got a few more things that I want to hit up on with the show updates. And the big one is this. When we, um, after Mini Nash, you basically have one week. So we recently had Corey on from Mini Truck Showdown. Mike, there's a lot of old school guys out there. And I tell you what, the amount of momentum that he is gaining with Mini Truck Showdown going down in Vegas, right? That last day of the month going into May. I'm so excited for it, Mike. And know for the scene, this is an important thing. I know apparently, you know, there's some people that are like, oh, you know, there's there's shows going on different sides of the country. But when you have people like Daryl Poe, a.k.a. DP, man, when he's gallivanting on out there with the outlaw and his tr- amazing truck, Nikki's rolling, I know she is. Mike, that's a lot to be excited about. Uh, yeah, dude, that you talk about a cross country, uh, um, uh, uh, Pimpin'. Uh, wow. I mean, that, that's a hell of a trip right there, brother. And, and uh, dude, you guys on the West coast are in for a treat, um, because I'm sure a lot of you guys haven't seen, um, the outlaw in person. Uh, so get ready. Cause, uh, this damn truck is, uh, is badass. It's one of the baddest S tens, um, you know, ever built. So you guys are in for a treat. That's for damn sure. Yeah, it's one of the baddest, mo- like a, a Mitsubishi, isn't it? Uh, no, this one's actually an S10. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, with this being as bad as it is, I can't, I can't fuck this one up, and I can't screw around with it either. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So, uh, you know, if you're if you're out that way, you're in the West. I mean, you obviously have heard about it. I mean, I've seen a lot of old school mini truckers. I know Sal. He's gonna be out there as well. We had Sal on Napoli. Old school dude. I mean, goes back many trucking 30 plus years. I know Ruben's going to be out there and uh, it's going to be an amazing event. So if you can look up mini truck showdown on Facebook or Instagram, Corey's been going live on Facebook. He's been doing a fantastic job. Get out to mini truck showdown. It's going down. And uh, it's simple. When you go to mini truck showdown on Instagram, you'll get a chance to see uh, some of the latest updates the event is sold out in terms of entries, but you can get in with uh, a pass. It's April 30th through May 2nd at the Palace Station Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. It's minitruckshowdown.com also for more information. So, Mike, the nice thing after Mini Truck Showdown, we'll have a couple of weeks off, and then we're going to be at Made to Steel Show. It's one of your favorite shows. It's one of my favorite shows, and you know I love the lemonade out there. You're going to be bringing the cornhole. Apparently, this this uh, is going down, and there's people that are vying for the champion. Can they outduel Miggity Mike the Mayor and whoever his partner is going to be? I don't know, Mike. I mean, you're you're pretty good sandbagging. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. No, me and uh, me and George, um, we definitely are are pretty damn good, and um, I'm not. We are not going to play in the actual tournament. But I tell you what, we will play whoever the winner is or whoever wants to take us on, And um, but we're not going to put up a trophy. Uh, we're going to actually play for some money. So whoever's down to want to play for some money, definitely let me know, and uh, and we'll we'll do the damn thing. Yeah, Made to Steel Show on Facebook, Made to Steel Show on Instagram. We are going to host a cruise that Saturday over to the event. There's a nice indoor space, right? So all of those are kind of pre-sanctioned by goat he does a fantastic job of selecting certain vehicles and uh, you know if you've got questions you can reach out to jeremy uh, for the under the kind of the big uh, building if you will so there's a a lot of cool spaces there there's plenty of space out there in the show field and then oh you got the the stereo competition so what i would ask is you know florida if you're listening to this let's round up the troops let's get out there this is one of a handful of shows we're very fortunate in florida that we have the amount of events that we have. The state is pretty much like wide open. So we can get out there. We can have a good time. If you want to leave uh, the premises to get lunch, you know, there's Mission Barbecue. There's plenty of places around there. There's a Portillo's out there. There's a lot of good stuff, but they also have food vendors there. They've got the sweet tea, the iced tea vendors. They've got the lemonade. They've got so much. But Mike, one of the most important things they have is the Freon poisoning. You walk in that nice air-conditioned room, dude, 
And I tell you what, Mike, on a hot summer May day, it's perfect, brother. It's perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah, you ain't lying there. Um, unfortunately, because we're doing the cornhole, we won't be in the AC to get that free on poisoning, but that's okay. We're still undercover, got the big ass fan that's underneath there, uh, to keep us cool. We'll be hanging out right there, um, by the DJ. So make sure y'all stop by the booth, get signed up, and, uh, let's throw, uh, let's throw some corn toss, like, uh, like ODB likes to say. Yes, sir. And then from there, Basically, we'll be at Relaxin in the park, St. Louis. Now, this is one that was, of course, canceled last year. So, if you are, uh, if you're pre-registered from last year, you're good to go. Many of you know that uh, St. Louis. For some people, might think it's far away. Go on Google Maps, take a look. It's not that far. You can get some very affordable plane tickets. So, Relaxin in the park, St. Louis, is the week after Made of Steel. Uh, so, Relaxin in the park, St. Louis. May 21st, 22nd, 23rd. We'll also, I believe, we're still live streaming from there with Street Trucks. Really looking forward to it. And then, Mike, the last but not least, the last show I wanted to hit upon is Scraping the Coast. So, title sponsor, from there, you got about five or six weeks. And uh, I'd say about five weeks. It's going to put you at the end of June. The great thing about the way Scraping the Coast has fallen the last couple years is you can kind of look at it a couple of ways. The way I look at it is it's the 25th, 26th, 27th. That's the weekend before 4th of July weekend. So many of you are going to have Monday. No, excuse me. Many of you are going to have, depending on where you work, you might have July 5th off as the observed holiday, right? And uh, some of you will decide to take that previous week off, right? If you're going on summer trip, whatever. So if you have that week off, you can gallivant on over to Biloxi, Mississippi for scraping the coast. Then you'll have that week off. And then, of course, you've got then the long weekend, the following weekend, which is July 4th weekend. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Scraping the coast. It's going to be insane, Mike. And I have to say to Greg Miller, he shared this the other day, Mike. What a fucking giveaway, dude. The giveaway that they're doing is amazing. I haven't seen a giveaway at an event quite like this. And um, when you look at what they're doing, when they're teaming up with amazing people like Viair that supports the scene, that's the heart of an air suspension, and companies like AccuAir that's back on the rise, Ryan and team are killing it over there. All you have to do is what, Mike, to be entered for that? All you got to do is register your vehicle. That's it. There's no other deal. You register, and if there's you know X amount of registrations, they pick one, and biggity boom. So you can't go wrong. I mean, hell, if you're going to go to the event, just register a vehicle. You'll get your badges in, and then you're in the game. You know what I mean? So get out there, register, pre-register, whatever you got to do. We're going to be in Biloxi the last weekend in June. It's going down. I, I'm hearing some of the big dogs are coming out swinging. There's the uh, cash reward for the best mini truck. Greg's going to talk more about that in an upcoming episode. But Scraping the Coast, Mike, arguably the biggest, baddest show in the country, 19th annual. And, of course, um, you know he always goes out and supports awesome events like Lone Star Throwdown on their 10th annual. Two amazing uh, show promoters you know, with Lonnie Radar and, of course, Greg and team. So we're excited that you know that these guys uh, are you know go out and support each other's events. So big ups to Greg and, of course, always big ups to our family at Lone Star Throwdown. Okay. So, Mike, the key show updates brought to you by the West Coast Influence. If you haven't heard, go to minitruckfilm.com, order a DVD or Blu-ray, let them know OLP sent you. So, Mike, we're going to kind of start wrapping this one up. Um, I want to thank Joey at Get Decked. At a lot of these events so far this year, we've been to a good amount. We've had that awesome skate deck with our artwork that's through Graphic Disorder. Joey at Get Deck always takes care of us. And we couldn't do the podcast updates without him. If someone is in need of a trophy, an award, whatever you want to call it, maybe something to put on your mantle, or you want to put your car or truck on a skate deck, simply go on Facebook and search Get Decked, two words, and look them up. Mike, what's the latest update on the merchandise, homie? Well, the latest and greatest is the banners of the yellow Mazda have arrived. And as soon as they arrived... They were shipped out. So anybody who ordered the yellow Mazda um, uh, banner, 
they are on their way. They shipped out today. So thank you. We appreciate you. And anybody that has not ordered a banner yet, they are on the site and ready to be shipped. If not, we will see you guys at Mini Nats. Guys, Mini Nats, we will have new hats. We will have full five new styles of hats at Mini Nats. We will have metal signs. We will have skate decks. We will have the new shirts. We will have all kinds of new merchandise at Mini Nats. So make sure you guys stop by the booth there at Mini Nats so we don't have to bring all that stuff all the way back to Florida. Yeah, definitely. So we've got a lot in store come by at Mini Nats. Like Mike said, it's going to be kick-ass. Okay, Airhead Nation updates. want to just thank Kim and David DeCorver for all the support with their event, Sparks in the Park. We had a fantastic weekend out there. But most importantly, congratulations on their anniversary, Mike. I think it's the 19th annual. And David, you know, David's a keeper is what Kim said, you know. So she keeps him around. I know he paints and, you know, he probably does a lot of other stuff. But they're two good people. And for uh, Kim to put up with David for as long as she has, you know, David's got to be – doing something right. You know, I don't know what, but maybe it's the painting skills. I don't know. He did fix the dually that she wrecked. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm just saying. But I want to say big uh, ups to David and, and Kim. Uh, the Airhead Nation updates brought to you by Hammered Weekend Wear. We love Hammered Weekend Wear. I rock it all the time. You can also be team hammered by visiting H-A-M-M-E-R-D weekendwear.com Make a purchase. Let Miggity Mike, no, let Riggity Ron Perkins know that you appreciate uh, all of the funny Hank stories. Hank is is not an easy guy to tie down, but if you had maybe if you add Hank is the man into the notes, you never know. Ron or Hank might just throw something else in. You know, you know what I'm saying, Mike? You know what I'm saying, hey, uh, if you let Hank know, you'll definitely get a little bit extra. You ain't got to worry about that. Just don't, just don't tell, just don't tell Ron. We don't want to get Hank in trouble. Real deal. And I think, Mike, the last thing I'll say before we start to wind in here, we're going to go over to Tim Davis. I think it's going to be amazing. I think you guys are going to really appreciate what a positive guy he is. You know, what's trending in social media is mini Nats. Listen, mini Nats, mini Nats, mini Nats. Next week, you can come out there. It's going to be an awesome event. You got mini Nats. You got a mini truck showdown. And then two weeks later, you got made of steel. So there's plenty of events nationwide to get out to. And have a good time. And Mike, what's trending in social media is always brought to you by an awesome brand that we support. And that this month is All Time Low Magazine. We so appreciate what they do. They put out a great quality mag. They often reinvest, you know, every month. They reinvest back into their awesome product. They've got the new, um, you know, quality magazine that they continue to put out. They've added pages, new bindings, things like that. But, Mike, what's the website again? It's ATL what? Dot com? Magazine. Dot com. Go out there, order a subscription. They've got the Mini Trucker Babe line. They've got banners, stickers, clearance, accessories. And, oh, by the way, of course, the magazine. Now, the magazine often sells out. That's why you need to order a subscription. I do believe they have extra issues of extra uh, extra issues of issue 27. Better late than never. Special reprint. Get out there. Shipping is included. Let them know OLP sent you. Tax is included. Shipping is calculated at checkout. Excuse me. So, with that being said, Mike, I think we might roll a little bit into some death row here. Keeping the theme going with the homie TD, a.k.a. Tim Davis. Relaxed atmosphere. Good dude. Mike, you got anything else on me? Brother, man, that is all. Glad to be back on here with you and the whole Airhead Nation. And uh, I just look forward to seeing everybody at uh, Mini Nats. It uh, seems like it's been forever. Uh, I know it hasn't been that long, but uh, definitely look forward to another um, another Mini Nats because I tell you what, it was badass last year, and I'm sure it's going to be even better this year. Because, guys, don't forget, after the VIP party, because we want to be able to be out there too, Jay's bringing a surprise. I'm going to have my truck there this year. We are definitely cruising the strip at Mini Nats. Can't wait. It's going to be unreal, dude. We're going to have our new something we're going to have. You're going to have to see it to believe it out there at Southeast Mini Truck and Nationals. Big ups to Jay Bell. We'll hear from him next week. Let's roll in to TD, a.k.a. Tim Davis, to his awesome uh, family 
and friends. He's a good dude. Give him a huge pat on the back for being an ambassador to the scene. Stay on the rise, y'all. We got you. Right, Mike? Peace. You like, don't want to see me because I'm a West Side hustler. West and I'm through with you, Buster. So give me my snaps because you owes me hoes. Khakis, Pendleton's, and Romeo's, nigga. West Coast, Rat Pack, 88 real niggas, all black. Come on. All back in your ass again. And you goddamn. Right. Yo, yo. And as I mentioned, we're going to segue in now to our guest for this week, Mr. Tim. How you doing, my brother, man? What up, man? What's going on? Hey, not much. Uh, really appreciate uh, you taking the time, Mr. Tim Davis, TD, man, for short. My brother. Yes, sir. Got a chance yes, to sir. really uh, meet you and get to, you know get to know you recently, man. And I just want to start off and ask, like, how you doing, brother? You know, how's everything going? Man, I, I couldn't be better, man. Like, everything's good. Uh, just recently located down here in South Alabama, man, and everything's good, man. It couldn't really be any better. Got some good shows to hit up and and meet some people and hang out with some friends and just do the thing. Hey, you, you said it, and you're a truck guy through and through. You know, the conversations you and I have had recently, you know, I, I've always l- admired your truck, but I didn't get a chance to really talk to you and know you until recently. And, you know, we have these awesome conversations, and I'm like, man, this is gold. <laughs> and, and I really, you know, I want to kind of delve into your truck history, really your automotive history. Now, uh, you know, most people know I like to kind of start off and say, you know, just tell us a little bit about yourself, like a little background, maybe where you grew up, Tim. Right. Tim Davis, I'm actually born and raised right outside of Nashville, Tennessee. J- just still really just the same kid that just enjoyed these trucks, you know, since as far back as I can remember. And it's just it's really been something I've been passionate about since since I was a young kid when I was five years old. You know, there was a guy that lived up the street from me in a duplex, man. And he had a, like I said, I was five or six and and he had a black brand new square body 1980 short bed Chevy that was all black, shaved door handles, mini tubbed on the back. And I I used to sneak out of my yard to go up there and just stare at it, you know? (laughs) So, I mean, I mean, that's as back as early as I can remember, you know, and I, I was risking you know, risking a a major backside tanning, you know, but I was willing to risk it to go up there and stare at that truck for no reason, (laughs) you know? So that's, that's about where it started, I guess. Yeah. And so you you probably had a lot of good memories and, you know, what kind of, what was the region that you primarily grew up in and went to school and stuff? Well, I guess it's, um, it's the mid South, I guess. Um, and right outside of Nashville, I actually grew up, you know, right there in the same, little areas where Johnny Cash lived. So I, I would, you know, I'd seen Johnny Cash, you know, here and there, which was pretty random. And, uh, you know, went to high school there and uh, ended up being a bag boy at the local market. And that's how, you know, I ended up buying my first truck at 16 and, uh, and just kept on going from there, you know. So here we are several years later. Man, wh- that's pretty cool. The legend Johnny Cash there's not many people you'll meet that don't know a song or were a fan enthusiast of Mr. Cash. But let me ask you, uh, talking back, you know, back to that era, do you remember being at the supermarket or I wouldn't really say bookstore. I think a lot of us, like, you know, you and I are similar age going to the grocery yeah. store with your mom or dad or both and looking at magazines. Oh man. Actually, actually in 1983, I was, uh, I was nine years old, and and me and my mom was at that same supermarket that I ended up working at, and I bought my, I begged her to buy me my first, it was trucking, but at the time, the issue still had, you know, like the Dodge vans with the, with the fishbowl windows in it and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I still have that magazine, but it, and I, I begged her, and she finally, you know, I, I, you would have thought that magazine was was six hundred bucks, but I mean it was what like like two dollars and thirty cents. But but you know I told her that day at nine years old I said I don't care what I do, but I'm gonna have a vehicle in this magazine some sort of way. And uh, you know I mean there's a story behind that. Yeah, and and I and I want to talk about that story, and, and I think that's cool. You. 
you know, you, you had this vision at a young age, and what was ironic is when we were at uh, Sparks in the Park, you know, we had this awesome conversation, and I remember, I still have the first issue of Truckin' that I remember getting my parents to buy me, and it's right. funny because when I look at it, I'm like, man, that was like 93, <laughs> and I kind of do the math, and I was like, man, was I, you know, I, I you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I was younger, but I, I really wasn't. I was probably, you know, right. 14-ish, right around there, and, uh, right. you know, right. 13, 14, and to me, I, I, I could, ex- I think I even mentioned to you, I, it had a red dually on it, and it has a, a boat on the cover, and uh, it's just a real yeah, classic yeah. I- issue, and it's funny how those memories are etched in our mind, you know, we, we knew, <laughs> it sounds like you knew right away that, you know, you were hooked, man, and you wanted a part of that, you know, lifestyle slash, you know, coolness or whatever you want to call it with trucks, man. Well, it's like I was hooked, but I didn't even realize I was hooked. It was just, I mean, I don't know. It was just like, I mean, there was no, I mean, it was just something that I was drawn to and I, it was just, that was just it, you know, I mean, and, and you know, as and then growing up, you know the some of the older kids, you know there was two or three that that really had some pretty cool trucks that went to the high school, and I'd see them going down the road, you know, and then and then it started, you know, it, it just kept on and kept on, and uh, I, I that, that's why I really think it's important because when when we're out in our trucks or doing what we're doing, you know, you never really know who you're passing in traffic and you never really know what, what little kid might, you know, we might be that influence to any of them. You never know, you know? So, I mean, it's, 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 it's just a cool thing. I mean, I, I don't is. really know how to put it into words. It, it is. And I was talking to someone recently and I forget who it was. And they had talked about the whole thought process of, a lot of us got involved, whether it was a magazine, but maybe we saw a truck cruising. And someone had a good mm-hmm. story, and, and I don't know what it is. My mind's a little hazy. And, it, you know, the person was kind of saying that, that, you know, I want to cruise my stuff because I want I, – I think God, it, it was something to do with cruising through a parking lot, and there was a little kid that was, like, pointing, like, oh, look at that, right? And the person – Jason, I think I was telling you. I think that that's story what it was. Sparks. Yeah, that's what it was. I, yeah, you're right. I was going to the gym. I was, yeah. I was going to the gym, and I drove the dually to the gym, and and I happened to turn. You know, this little kid, he was bored. You know, it looked like his mom was having a conversation with another, you know, friend of hers, and you could tell he was bored. And I was pulling in, but as I turned around, you know, he, he's pointing at me, and you know, and it's like, I mean, I get either he was pointing because he thought he seen something, you know, but. You, you know you can tell it's like hey look at that you know and and you never really know that what that might spark in somebody yes you know? and so. it was such a good story and man i tell you i i think hammered <laughs> ron and hank and you know the guys over at graphics mafia i think they just kept me out way past my bedtime on saturday man but all, all kidding aside but <laughs> you can't you can't trust hank you can't trust hank the dude, dude's the dude's super sketchy like he's dude he's, He's a hundred miles a minute. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know NWA <laughs> was a hundred miles and running, but I think you coined it. He's a hundred miles yeah, a minute. Yeah, uh, man, yeah. Uh, yeah I, he's a crazy dude. So you know that was a cool story for me. You know when you had mentioned that because you know things are different now these days, of course, with social media and everything's on your phone, and you know you have this gateway right. to everything. But seeing something out there that's cruising, I was talking to Josh Ellis earlier this week, and. You know, he mentioned uh, he was up at the grocery store and he saw an 88 to 98 go by and it was lowered. He right. goes, oh, there's a lowered truck, you know. It, it's like the stuff just jumps out at us and we don't see as much of it cruising. But now, you know, we talked about trucking and like my understanding. So when you got when you first got into the scene, right, mm-hmm. there's different magazines out there. So what, what, what was one of the other bigger magazines you were – uh, reading Man. and also did that did you get in more involved in that stuff early on it, it you know thinking back on it, it it's almost like even it was all about the mini truck stuff but i ended up i, I was I, I i ended up looking at more min, uh, low rider you know and it's almost like i was really into like you know the the tilt beds and uh and the dating wheels and uh you know the ground effects, you know, with that fat, that fat wheel look, 
but it was still mini truck inspired, you know, and then it, it seemed like that was a really big part of it. But I remember the first time a buddy of mine brought in a mini truck magazine. It was actually in Spanish class and it was the first time that I seen ballistic. And, really? and I was like, man, I was like, that's a whole nother level. I was like, what the <laughs> heck, you know? So now, you know, it, it kind of, it, it, it's always been mini truck inspired, but, but with the, with the extreme body drop, you know, you couldn't run the fat wheels. So you, you kind of had to go a different, but that just blew my mind, you know, but, but it, to me like that, that, that low rider style and the mini truck style to me, it, it's just, to me, it's the same, you know, but it, it, it's just a cool thing, you know? And it is. And, uh, and, and you know, Jason, really the funny thing is about my truck now, the red and hard body, you know, if you really break it down, what my truck is, is nothing more than, uh, an old 720 convertible with some Porsche Foosh wheels on it. it it's still, <laughs> but it's just a different, it's a different style, but it's still a mini truck with European style wheels on it. You know, it's, it's an, it's a really old idea, you know? So I call it like the, it's like mini truck in one Oh one, you know, it's, it's nothing deviated too far from that style that you really liked. But yeah, it's yeah. it's just enough to go. Okay, man, it's topless. It's got cool wheels. Interior is super clean, you know. And it just it, it really kind of hits. Now, with some good conversation with you, you also kind of were into the low riders, though, right? Did you really oh, yeah. go out to the West Coast, you know, in the early '90s to a show, or how did that come about? Oh, uh, the '92. I think it was the '92 LA Roaster show, and. uh that that's where you know i i seen like you know that's where those cool pictures come out of where you know of like um like the car they used in the today was a good day video and stuff like that you know and it was just i, I don't know i don't know how to explain it. it was just i i never i never got a chance to have that that dayton wheel you know it's still that that's still on my list but you know, going out there, you know, everything's chrome and gold plated and, uh, you know, candy paint flake, you know, it's just, it's a mind blowing experience to be honest with you. There's no, <laughs> as a young kid, it's just mind blowing, you know? Yeah. And, and so like, you know, how did that work out? Because obviously we're similar age and, you know, early nineties, I mean, I remember begging my car- my parents to go to the movies, let alone, did you end up? Did you go? Did you get to go to the L.A. Roadster show it, back it, then? It, it, was and a, it was a it was a friend of mine, a friend uh, of mine, Joey, and you know he. I don't know how do you explain it. He he had a you know he was able to do you know his parents you know like he he might get a trip or something for his birthday and I got to tag along type thing you know so it, it's just you know one of those things I got to be the fly on the wall you know. And, and walk around and just experience it, you know? So it's just super cool. Yeah, you know, it's just l- looking back on it, it's hard to believe that it happened. And, you know, when we were talking and I was looking for some pictures, I actually ran across them old pictures, and it just brought back a lot of memories, you know? So so did you find yourself, like, early in those days? I mean, I know you mentioned you never really end up having the Daytons, if you will, but... <laughs> Did your love of the low riders like me? I had a few low rider magazines, nothing crazy. Obviously, yeah. early '90s, kind of in the mid. You got Ballistic January '93, I think it was cover. So we're kind of talking right. the same time period. Did you did your love for the low riders kind of just stay to hey a couple shows here and there, and then reading the mag? Yeah, yeah, because I just wasn't fortunate enough, you know that that trip. I just wasn't fortunate enough to be able to have them kind of trips very often. You know, and uh, other than that, like, you know, as far as shows that I could actually get my truck to, you know, they were like your local, n- nothing real big, you know, it was just kind of your local, you know, shows. And, uh, but, you know, going into a big show like that, it's just on a whole nother level. You know, it's almost like you almost feel like you're in a, um, like, you know, it's just a different environment, a different feel. You know, it's big, it's big time. It's the big boys, you know? It definitely, yeah, it definitely is. So, you know, we're talking 
uh, with Tim Davis here, and and you know we're talking about reminiscing about the old days, of course. Now, when you think back to that era, like at what point did you start, you know, maybe getting your first vehicle? Was your first vehicle a mini? Like, talk to us a little bit about that. When I turned sixteen, I actually found a truck. It was a local truck. It was like an '88 hard body. It was white with a like a blue drip paint job scheme on it, and uh, it turned up for sale. And I, I really wanted this truck, you know. So I had to find a way to get it. So um, my local town, I decided when I was in school, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I used to ride the bus home. I thought I'm gonna walk home from school today. And I'm going to try to find me a job. Mm-hmm. And that's my first step to trying to get this truck I want. So so I there, there was about a two-mile stretch, you know, and I went to a Kmart. And I went to – I actually went to the supermarket that I actually ended up working at. But I, I had walked so far that I couldn't – what I had left, I had a Taco Bell – and a crystal's hamburger left. And that was my, if that didn't work, I'm out of luck. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That, that I, I can't, I can't walk from home to work. That's about as far as I can go. I got my first job. I was at Chris, I was at Taco Bell mm-hmm. and I thought, man, I was like, I really didn't want to work at crystal's man, but Taco Bell, you know, that'll work. And I'll be now and get me a, so I got home, I got a job, and I got home and I asked my parents if I could borrow the money to buy that truck. And, of course, they said no. So I, I, lo- I never got the truck. I never got that one. Mm-hmm. So that kind of bummed me out. But what I did get is I got an 89 hard body. I bought it, and it had uh, – it was lowered, and it had the, uh, the solid um, – inky wheels on it and it had uh i remember it had the the 205 50 15 euro tire on the front of it but it had this big balloon 60 series tire on the back of it mm-hmm. and i was like man that's this just ain't gonna work and uh so with my first check i actually bought the truck i was working at taco bell i actually bought two new tires for the rear those bfg euro tas set it down a little bit more in the back and and I remember hitting the streets with, um, I think I had some too short or some NWA in the <laughs> tape deck. And I, I had just got my license, you know, and I was, I was on main street, you know, but that truck ended up being, um, you know, it ended up turning into really a super nice truck. I had a flake paint job put on it. Um, radical ground effects, Texas tail, all that stuff. Two twelves. It was a bad, it was a pretty bad truck for the day, but I never had the money for the Dayton's. And, uh, there, there was a, a side note. There was a kid in town that had a little red convertible Toyota that I always loved, which that, that little red Toyota was the reason that was the inspiration for the reason my truck looks like it does today. But the, the hard body that I had, I I ended up selling it. And the day that I handed the keys over, I knew I made a mistake and I just never got over it. You know, that truck, you know, I let that truck go and I, and it, it just haunted me for, for years, you know? And, uh, sure enough, the Sunday after I sold it to this boy named Rusty, he popped up at, at my house, you know, where I lived with my family. And, and sure enough, Jason, he had the Dayton's on it. Really? You know? And I, yeah, he had, uh, he had chrome and gold Dayton's on it. Uh, 1510 reverse Euro TAs. <laughs> and man, I said, man, can I drive it, man? And, uh, and he let me drive it. And I never will forget. I was thinking to myself, if he wasn't at my house, I wouldn't take it back. But I can't, <laughs> I got to go back. Cause he's, you know, but I, I remember, yeah, he, he put the Dayton's on it the week after I sold it. And, and, and it, I just, I just never got over it. You know, I, 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 I moved up into uh, big trucks, sport trucks. I've had other things, Mustangs, but I never got over selling that first truck. And, uh, you know, and that, that's really that's really the story behind the Nissan I have now. You know, it just, it's my first truck. You know, it's the it's the truck I wanted in high school, but I didn't have the money to fund it. Yeah, you definitely. Know? So, 
well, NWA must have been a big influence because you were already thinking about doing a GTA, like Easy said. You know, oh, man. the boys in the hood right. are always hard. <laughs> yeah, man, the NWA, man. I mean, that, that's the root. That's you what, know? That's like what we we were raised on. <laughs> I love yeah, it, man. Now, the photo, some of the photos, just to give a visual to the listeners, when you had sent me the photo in front of, I think it was in your front of your house, the house you grew up in. So the truck when right. you had it was kind of like a maroon color, wasn't it? Right. That that was the day I bought it. That was I was 16 in that picture, and that's the day I brought it home. And uh, the truck had no power steering, no AC. It was a five speed, you know. And my dad didn't want me to have. It. He's like, you can't turn the wheel, you know. You you know, it, it was it was negative, negative, negative. And I was like, I I'm having this truck, you know. Yeah. I'm buying this truck, you know. I'm cooking taco meat, and I'm having this truck, you know. <laughs> Damn it, I'm working at Taco Bell. Yeah, and and I had similar, I know, like, my age around, you know, similar time. You know, my dad was like, oh, you know, he wanted me to get, you know, a certain kind of, you know, truck. And yeah. I was kind of like, eh, and, ah, oh, you know, he, he there were cer- certain things. He didn't really want me to go. I was looking at, like, a Mitsubishi or something. I'm man, I want to get one of these. And right. he's like, man, get you a good old American S10, you know. <laughs> and I was kind of like, well, yeah. but I didn't have the means to really work on it. So I could kind of understand, you know, your dad kind of concerned with, well, hey, man, you're getting in this. And sometimes they feel like when you're 16 – that your head, you're not really thinking straight, you know. Well, you know, you, you just need to listen to me, and it's like you're like, dude, yeah. I just want to follow my dreams, you know, Dad. I, 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 mo- I most definitely wasn't thinking straight. I was thinking, <laughs> I, I had, I had million dollar dreams, and I was making like what, like two fifty an hour. Yeah, dude, <laughs> I know? remember when I first started. I think minimum wage was like four fifteen an hour, and we're talking like yeah, ninety five, I think, something like that. Something crazy, you know, but. You know, but with that truck, you know, it just, but once I got it, man, and it, it was just, uh, you know, I, you know, I had something, I had a foundation, you know, but, but the big, the big thing with me is, you know, I, I just, I knew, I knew I just didn't never have the finances to, to have the, the most expensive stuff. It's kind of like building a race car. You can't. There's always somebody that's going to have a faster race car, but I was determined that whatever I do have, it's going to be as clean as possible. Yeah, that's like you're like, hey, I'm going to control. be in the race. I may not be the front runner, but I'm yeah, going to be yeah, I, out there. I'm going to be one of the you know the participants. And oh, by the way, my stuff's going to be ultra clean. So I may sneak up on you and and, and get one of these checkered flags. You know. Well, that that's the thing. Also, Jason is like the, these. You know, meeting up with you guys at all these events that we go to, most people don't realize that that I never, I never, I don't have the option. I don't, I don't I've never had my truck judged for any kind of trophy or anything. I go because I just want to be, I just want to be in the race with the people. I, I it's just so awesome to just be affiliated. Man, you know what dude. I'm saying? Just just to be able to get out there on the dance floor, even though you ain't got no moves. But, <laughs> I mean, you, know you, you got to be like a Mike Murray to start break dancing and getting the crowd going <laughs> wild. I mean, let's be honest, but 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 just to, just to be there, just to be a part of the, just to be a part of it, you know, and and that's the most important thing. We were at Orange Beach Invasion earlier this year, and you had shared with me. You're like, you know, I go to shows, and I, you know, I just don't even want to be judged, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, like. Well, you know, yeah. we don't go to shows for trophies, but like you were like what you just said for the listeners out there. I mean, he literally is like, "Hey, I'm," and and I, I almost, I mean, dude, I commend you for it because like you go to a show, you pay the entry, and I remember you know someone was complaining about a trophy one time, and someone <laughs> chimed in and they and they go, "Hey, man, you should just be happy. There's a show." And I understand yeah. there's the competitive nature because, you know, you got guys that go, well, man, you know, I cleaned my stuff all night or I polished this or polished that. You know, you're always going to have those guys. But to me, you're more of a, um, you know, a diver in the rough in terms of the mindset that you have. You're like, hey, I'm going to the show. I'm paying the entry fee because I want to be here. I want to hang out. But no, no reason to give me a, a, an award, you know? No, I, I really believe like these show promoters, you know, they, they stick their neck out and they, they really, it takes so long to prepare these events. And, and there's a lot of stuff that goes in behind the scenes 
And, and, you know, that entry fee to me is just saying, hey, man, I appreciate you doing it. You know, this is my contribution back because, you know, you went through these, I mean, so many months and these headaches to get these shows prepared, you know. And, and, and that entry fee is just me saying, hey, man, I, I appreciate it, you know. And, and that entry fee keeps this, it keeps the support going to keep these shows happening so we can meet people and, and build these kind of relationships, you know. So that's, that, that's really what it's about to me. You yeah, know? I couldn't have said it better. And again, I know there's a lot of different kind of people out there, different mindsets. You know, we all kind of have our own. I think it's good to hear other people's perspective like Tim's because yeah. it reinforces to us to us it's like if, if someone were to say hey Jay uh, we're going to have Scraping the Coast there's going to be no awards but there's not many shows anymore and would you still come out to it with your truck absolutely you know and I've joked about it. it's like man if I ever have a show I might just do a show with no awards right and everyone's right, like alright right. what are we you know everyone's like well, what are trophies going on it's like Hey man, I don't know if you got the memo. We got the fax machine that we sent out the faxes. There's no trophies. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I mean that, that that's super cool, you know. I mean, it's but, a cool concept. But yeah, I mean, that, that, that's my take on that. So talk to us a little bit about right. So we're talking to Tim, and you know Tim. Obviously, you have this mini truck, and you kind of establish like you get your feet wet, you have fun with it. It's just not in the cards at the age and the stuff you got going on, so you sell it. So yeah. between, you know, you kind of mentioned you had some other cars in between there. I know from talking to you, now the pieces of the puzzle have come together. You end up with this 88 to 98, right, which we all know is the OBS trucks. So was that the right. next kind of truck that you had after the Mini? Well, after the Mini, I, I bought a I bought a LX Mustang, you know, and, uh, you know, done done that kind of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. and But it just, it just wasn't the same. And at that point... You know, I actually ended up, I actually ended up getting a job at the, at a place called Hunter's Custom Automotive in Nashville. And, and they, they had been there since 1968. So they were a, a well-established, you know, into the hot rods and, and things like that. So I got that, I, I ended up at Hunter's, you know, just, you know, putting up, you know, unloading trucks and, and doing things like that. And uh, just kind of being a stock person, and I would I would linger around the sales counter and stuff like that. And uh, the Mustang, it, it just it just lost its luster really quick, you know. And I was thinking, man, I'm not a car guy, man. Like this thing's got to go. And uh, and actually, I in '95 '96, I was actually I got a hold of a Bell Tech catalog, and the little the little Blazers, the S Blazers, had come out. And I was trying to get from the local Chevy dealer. I was trying to get them. I was trying to get them to order me a silver blazer with black leather interior, and I was going to bell tech it out, you know, and stuff like that. And at the time, Hunters was the East Coast distributor for Boyd Wheels. So I started. I started really. I was like, man, this is where it's at, you know. And uh, it it, it started all over again. But the blazer. At the time, the Chevy dealer said they couldn't order me that color combo, and uh, and I just kind of got fed up with you know, and I was like, this has got to happen. So I'd been flipping through the Bell Tech catalog, and there was an extended cab Chevy truck in there. So I left on lunch one day, and I went over to the Chevy dealer, and I knew I was like, they got to have a white extended cab. So. I ended up over there buying a white extended cab brand new in 96 and uh and I you know and I thought we're going to we're back in the game you know and uh at the time like I said at the time Hunters was the East Coast distributor for Boyd Wheels and then the billet specialty started coming on the scene you know and we ended up we ended up really being a a big distributor for billet specialty so I bought this brand new 96 extended cab chevy and uh the next day i had to call my boss and tell him i wasn't going to make it back to work so i was signing papers pulled in the parking lot the next morning he said he said right on tim you know and he said go down go downstairs and he made me a deal and he said 
gather up all the suspension stuff for it, uh, pick you out a set of wheels. And at the time, they 17s, you know, 18s wasn't even out. Yeah, 17s I, were I, like the 30s today. <laughs> oh, man, the 17s, man, like I was like, wow, you know. So I picked out a set of um, Billet Specialty GT85 17, 17 8 front, 17 10 and a half in the rear. And he said, he told me, he's like, take your time, strip it down, pull all the moldings off, take the bump, you know, pick out a smooth bumper, uh, get the grill off. You know, we had a little body shop, local body shop that would color match stuff. He said, get everything, put it in the bed, take the truck to the suspension and have the suspension done on it. So within, within four or five days, I had my truck back less than a hundred miles and I, I was rolling a straight sport truck you know dude and, and uh, it and to me like a, a, a child or a kid young adult of your age at that time that had to have been like the overhaul and chip foos overhaul and timeline of that era because think about it i mean oh no doubt to, you know if if i was you know johnny kid and i walk in the shop and go hey i want to order some wheels all right man you know about four weeks six weeks you know whatever like you were literally like in a week or two you're freaking ready to roll the strip, man. Well, I mean, aside from that, Jason, I just like, I wasn't even over the butterflies. I done <laughs> wandered off to the Chevrolet dealer and I done signed papers on a brand new truck, you know, and I'm thinking, <laughs> holy crap, right. you know, and then, uh, you know, but once it was all done, you know, like, like it just, it, it's the same, it's that same feeling as being that 16 year old kid, you know, and I mean, I don't think that feeling ever leaves. You know, I, so I don't think so at all. And, you know, there's a lot to unpack there. And I wanted to kind of, you know, chime in with some couple cool things. Right. And, and ask you a few things. Yeah. So obviously the 88 to 98, all of our interest has peaked. But when you said hunters, it made me think uh, and many of the listeners out there, you know, we have been reading magazines a long time, you know, some of us longer than others. And growing up in that era of these 88 to 98 trucks, I mean, dude, I've got all my truckins from that era that I would purchase <laughs> and hunters right. was everywhere. As you know, now, if right. I remember, I think the owner's name was like, uh, it was Johnny and Linda, I think. Right. John, Johnny and Linda friend. Yeah. Like they're, friend. they're, yep. I can't, I can't say, I can't say enough good about them. You know I mean? For, for Johnny to do what he did for me and, and just kind of, you know, he, he, he took money out of my check every week, but you know, he didn't have to do that, you mm -hmm. know, and, but, but he's seen, I, I don't know. I just, I, I can't say enough about that. You know, just like a good dude. Oh man. You know, I mean, you, you can give somebody a set of wheels and you can, you can do this and do that for somebody. But like when you're really bringing somebody along and giving them a, a dream, like letting them realize a dream, like, that's that's hard to do, you know, and uh, I just can't I just can't say how much I appreciate that. You know, I, I I mean, 30 years later, I'm still so appreciative. It's hard for me to talk about it, you know. Yeah. So. And, and I hear that in your voice. And so here's the other cool thing. You know, when I look back, I, you know, there's there are two of the names. Obviously, you know, Boyd's is in there. But, you know, I mm -hmm. always thought of Hunters and Sport Truck by Dean, like just two shops. I love seeing the stuff that came out of there. And, you know, with you talking about your 88 to 98 and all the stuff, you got to have some fond memories because what you were kind of explaining to me, man, you talk about how the 88 to 98s are exploding now or as we call it OBS yeah. on the rise. But think about this. Yeah. You know this firsthand, dude. It must have been like a kid in a candy store because other than like, you know, obviously Trends was doing their stuff, Empire right. Motorsports. But being a distributor, which, by the way, I think Hunters is still in business from last yeah. I checked, right? Yeah. So they're still in yeah. business they, over they 50 are. years. Tell us yes, about sir, the, I, I, just the feeling of being a kid in a candy store with all this billet. I mean, you had everything at your fingertips. Oh, man. I, I mean, you know, like, I, I'll put it to you this way. Like, when all the billet interior stuff came out, and it, and it was coming out, at different times and i'll put it to you this way the the ups truck would show up on at 9 30 in the morning <laughs> and me, me and my brother my brother worked with me also but we would have to go out and unload the ups truck and i'll and i'll i'll use this as an example the heater box cover 
You remember the heater box cover that goes below the glove box? Yes. On the, on the OBS truck? I pulled that out. What what could this be? Unwrapped it, heater box cover, and I already had I already had the instrument cluster and the radio bezel and the, the door panels. I already had all that. But pull the heater box cover out. Johnny sees me. Johnny sees me unbox it. He's like, go ahead, Tim. Just go ahead and put it on. Like, cause you, and I'm at work. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've got a job to do. But it was like Christmas morning being in my living room. And, and I, I'm like, I haven't even paid for this yet. And Johnny already sees it in my eye. You know, I've mm-hmm. got to put this on right now. You know, so it, it was that type of environment. You know, so. Yeah, and I remember looking at, I was telling Josh, looking at some of the ads, I, I got to dig out. I mean, I got all the truckings. I know right where they're at, but, man, some of those things, they got thick between, like, 96, 95, and 2000. And right. And there's, there's so many different ones, but you had Empire, of course, in there and whatnot. But that was the one cool thing because those trucks were so popular that, you know, they had the, as you know, like, you know, the billet, um, oh, shit handle on the passenger side. And uh, my buddy was just talking with Tom at Builder and Acrylic. I mean, he's still making a lot of the knobs, right? The AC knobs and you yep. had the coat yeah. hangers. And you had all that cool stuff. And literally, man, it was like it was like a drug almost. Yeah, it, it was crazy. It was billet insane, you know. And then, and then all the underhood accessories, you know. I mean, it just went on for days, you know, and... But, but yeah, it was just so cool. You know, I had to, you know, stock that stuff on the shelf and, and, you know, and, <laughs> and, and then, and then lingering, you know, being, being a young kid, you know, I, I was 20, 21 years old and I would be lingering around the sales counter, which I wasn't supposed to be doing. I had other stuff I was supposed to be doing, <laughs> but on a, on, a, on a real busy Saturday, you know, the people, the people that worked the counter, you know, they might be tied up. So being a young kid and, and there would be customers in there that would maybe have questions, you know, I would step up and I'd be like, well, let me show you this, you know? And it was just, it was just so fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, I'm a little kid, but they was looking at me but they's like, you know, may, maybe he's got something to say that we need to listen at, you know? And, and it's just, it was just such a rad time, you know? It definitely but, was, and and for anyone that's maybe a newer listener, you know, we obviously got some younger listeners out there, like the future mini truckers, good people. The vibe of it, if you ever get a chance, just you know, pick up one issue of trucking from ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine, and you'll take a look. You'll see what I mean. The trucks that Brian McCormick were shooting, and a lot of these trucks weren't even bagged; they didn't have to be. They were static dropped on seventeens with oh, a yeah. lot of cool billet, and they just had that vibe. Now. I, I do – so talk to us a little bit about your truck, uh, the white one, because, you know, you, you've kind of brought us along a little bit, and I wanted to derail and talk about Hunters. But when you talk about some of the stuff, you know, you start lowering it, you know, smooth bumpers and stuff, what did that manifest in in terms of, you know, the photo shoot? Well, like I said, when I first done it, you know, it, it had some 17s on it, and, you know, and it, it just – it, it, it was a cool truck. It had all color match bumpers and handles and things like that. And then, uh, I actually, Johnny, Johnny had, to, had went to SEMA that year. And, uh, he, you know, I was always excited cause I never knew what he might bring back, you know? And, uh, while he was at SEMA, you know, I had somebody offer me some money for, my my 17 inch billet set was on my truck and uh while he was gone i was like all right i'll i'll take that offer and i'll sell my wheels so johnny comes back that following week and he's like what happened to your wheels i was like well they're gone and he's like what do you want to do and i i was thinking i was thinking i'm gonna step up to the big time jason i'm gonna put a set of 18s on oh boy boy." yeah man that was was of the era yep and johnny said well he said well hold up before you make your mind up and and in about two or three days you know we got some stuff you know he would have some stuff that would stop popping back in that you know from SEMA whatnot and uh the first thing that popped up was that GMC Phantom grill that oh, that four dude. light Phantom yep and I was like man I gotta have that and he really, he really didn't want me to put that in my truck at the time because he didn't, 
he didn't stock that grill. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't something that he sold on a regular basis, but I wasn't hearing that. That's, <laughs> that's my grill. My man, that's you're a smart guy. Yep. You know? <laughs> and, uh, so, so within two or three days, the, he had a set of wheels sent back that Colorado customs used for display at SEMA, which was a, a 20 inch at that time. It was really rare. A 20 inch Colorado custom Windsor. And it had a special set of um, Comp TA BFGs because a 20 inch tire wasn't wasn't at all readily right available. 20. Yep. So so here I I unload this set of wheels and I remember it had a cardboard face on it and I was like, what's this? And I knew they were massive. <laughs> and Johnny Johnny's smiling, and I tear the I tear the cardboard off and I said. You know, and and it was a it was a nineteen by eight front Colorado Custom Windsor, and a twenty by ten and a half Colorado Custom Windsor for the back, with that custom BFG tire. And I was like, "What? What do these cost?" And he said, "I knew, I didn't want you know he he wanted me to wait for that twenty, mm-hmm. you know." And Jay Jason, man, I you talk about I was like, "All right, we're gonna put this we're gonna put this uh, crazy looking Phantom grill in the front of it." And we're going to put this crazy set of wheels on it. And I was like, this, this is the truck that I feel I may have a chance at them at the pages of that magazine I got when I was nine years old in 1983. Mm. You know, I just had a feeling, you know, and uh, because backtrack, you know, I, I told my mom, you know, when I got that magazine at nine years old, whatever I do, I'm going to have something in this magazine. Yeah, and it and it came full it came full circle. So you basically have the white eighty eight to ninety eight extended cab. You've established, right. you know, you've got the chrome bumpers, you've got the trends right. grill, you've got some empire parts on it, of course, uh nineteens right. and twenties, got the Colorado Custom Wheels, my favorite wheel company. And so all of that turns into talk to us a little bit about the photo shoot and, and what went down. Well, you know, other other than, you know, I'd never actually had a vehicle in a big show. Like, you know, and and Johnny Johnny and them were going to the um the Sport Truck Nationals in Owensboro, Kentucky in nineteen ninety eight. And so I was like, Man, I'm going, you know? And uh I took the truck up there and and, and I'm out there, you know, with with the heavy hitters and I'm, I'm just kind of in awe again of the stuff I'm seeing. And, uh, you know, sure enough on a Friday night, I can't remember the people's name, but they asked me if I could have my truck in the, um, in the auditorium at six forty five on the Saturday morning. And, and I was like, I was like, yeah, I, I and, and I didn't know if they were wanting me to park in a, in a different spot or something. And uh, and they said no, we're gonna we're, we've got an idea, and we're gonna shoot your truck because it's white. Uh, we're gonna use an American flag backdrop and use it for next July's cover. And dude, I was just I, I can't even. I mean, you know, it, it's hard to put that feeling into words. Like it's when, when you when as a young kid and you set out on something that's really unreachable. And all the negativity that you hear along the road of people telling you you can't do it and why you can't do it and and it's such a reach, but to finally to finally see that happen, it's a feeling like no other. It, you know, it, it kind of teaches you how to be resilient in your life. If it's something you really want, it could take forever. But it, it might, it, it's very possible if you just keep on course, you know, and it was, um, it was just an unreal experience. You know, I, I had that truck, um, I had that truck 10, 10 years and I, I sold it to a buddy of mine and it, it's still, uh, it's still as I left. You yeah. Know, it, it's but. an amazing truck. And when, if anyone, um, wants to know it's July of 99, it's the Chevy truck. Right all Chevrolet truck magazine and it was titled bow tie or uh, bow tie power. And right. I tell you that era is so iconic. You know, you got the painted door handles, painted mirrors, <laughs> built antenna, of course, shaved. Uh, you had pointed out to me in some photos that, 
He had the shaved hood cow, which was cool. Never really right. had wipers on it, you said. And then I think you had the steel hood cow, and then, of course, the the uh, Trends, uh, the famous. The grill. Yeah, the grill, including the headlight <laughs> covers, because that's the one I think that Shulman has on his crew cab. And it uh, is. It, it is. it's very iconic. And, and why someone doesn't bring that back out this you know these days is beyond me. Well, you know, I mean, it, it's been talked about, and I, you know, I, I still have. Unfortunately, I, I only have one set. I've got the the passenger upper and lower. I've got one set, you know. But I mean, that's really all that's left of that grill was because I ended up putting an Escalade conversion on it, you know. And uh, but. I mean, it, it it was just a highly it's a highly sought after grill. There just wasn't very many of them. Yeah, there know? wasn't. And so. and just for those scoring at home that might say, "Well, wait a minute, why would you change it?" There was a little fender bender, right? And that that destroyed half of it. But the cool thing is, you just mentioned you have the other half of the grill. So you never know, man. You might find the other half, and then you'll be on the rise again with another front end. <laughs> yeah and you never know like i said you never know you know but uh yeah actually i actually hit a deer with it and it wiped out the driver's side of the grill yeah grandma got (laughs) ran over by a reindeer right you know so yeah yeah Yeah. you you were the real santa claus man coming that was the sand that that, see that's the santa sleigh i like a white full-size 88 to 98 chevy I was out there trying to discuss with that deer what exactly he had damaged, but I don't think he ever understood my point. Nah, not yeah. at all, man, not at all. <laughs> so from there, right, you know, having had some great conversation with you, you basically, you had this 88 to 98, we'll share the photos. I mean, like a really, I know the word epic is used a lot, but I think like when you couple the epic journey, I'll say, like, you know, reading the magazine uh, mention the quote too, um, in just a second here, but you know, you basically had this, this journey of reading this magazine and having this dream working at hunters, obviously a very cool spot to work, uh, getting all this done to the truck, getting shot. The guy goes, Hey, we're going to park it in front of the American flag and it's going to be on the cover. And you're like, what? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. all of this, but talked, um, mention the quote that they ended up using in, in the issue, which I thought was awesome. And it tied into your mom. Well, it's actually written up in there, you know, and it's when they talk to you about writing the article and stuff, the editors and all that, you know, and I guess he picked up on it and, uh, and they've got it written in there that, uh, it says something like Tim's mom cautioned him at an early age that, uh, that by the time he was old enough to drive, you know, trucks probably wouldn't even be in style at that time. <laughs> yeah. That's you know, a typical- long time ago. That's been- it's been a long time ago, Jason, and I, I think they're, if not now, they're they're on top of their game more now than ever. They're on the rise. Know, so. I, yeah, and, uh, you know, it's a typical thing a parent would say, hey, you know, come on, little Johnny, we got to get going yeah. here, you know. Yeah. Uh, ice cream's melting, but, you know. It, but I, it, wasn't hear, I wasn't hearing it. <laughs> like, I'm just not hearing it. Just quit. I'm not hearing it, you know. Yeah, you weren't, and. That's the cool thing about styling, and when something is is you know not just the fad, or you had this awesome styling of these trucks. I know you know Ronnie over at C10 Talk. He talks a lot about that. I remember you know owning my suburban, and what was ironic is the the same interior color you had in there was the same in mine. The blue color, kind of <laughs> yeah. may, maybe not the color you'd see very often, but certainly my favorite color. And, you know, all of the styling of those trucks, and it's pretty cool now 20, you know, give or take 20, 25 years, depending on where you really slice and dice it, almost 30 years, you know, from the sport truck era, the the evolution of it. So it's pretty cool. But, I, you know, I don't want to skip ahead, you know, too fast. But, you know, from there, when you end up selling that truck, do you, like, take a little bit of a break? Do you do you just jump right back into minis? Like, what's the journey there before you get back to this Nissan you have? Well, the the truck actually went – I had the truck 10, 10 or 11 years, and, you know, it, it was a big part. You know, I mean, it, it was just a big part. You know, I thought I would never sell it, but Dave Kendig come out with a white – like a 60, a 65 Mustang that he had a, a huge wheel and tire, like pro touring. It was a white, you know, with a black, like a carbon fiber looking center stripe on it. And, and me kind of always having a, you know, I've always liked the Mustang Fox bodies. The guy that's got my truck now, 
he come back from Houston with a 93 Fox body coupe that, that belonged to a race shop. And it was just a super nice car. And, uh, and I thought I'm going to get my hands on that Fox body and I'm going to pro tour it. Like Ken Dig did that white sixties Mustang with, mm-hmm. with like a, like a 2214 rear wheel and just make it something crazy. At that time, at that time that nobody had really seen anything like that. That was, you know, that that's like in 2001, 2002, when I was coming up with this idea. So I actually had the Mustang for a little bit, but when I got my hands on the car, the car was too nice to cut up. So now I'm screwed, you know, and I thought, <laughs> well, this ain't going to work, you know? So I had the car for a while and, uh, and when the biker build off shows, shows was popular, you know, me and a buddy of mine, we were sitting around watching one of them biker build off shows, having a beer or two high school buddy. Well, he comes up with the idea. Let's have, let's, let's have one of these build offs like these bike bikers do and we'll build us some mini trucks. And I was like, well, now we're on to (laughs) something. And I said, I I said, one up better than that. I said, I'm going to get me a hard body and I'm going to build it the way that I wanted my truck that resembled the Toyota back in the 1990, Mm -hmm. you know? And the idea was we were going to build these trucks. So, but he snuck out and bought one finish. And I said, but that's not the deal, you know? So, but I can play your game, and I had a big, I had a big story because I told him I was going to make like this heavyweight belt, and whoever wins this vote off in this pool hall, we were going to put them in this pool hall and have people vote on them. Who was going to get this belt? That never actually happened. But so I, since he bought a finished truck, I hopped on the internet, and I found my truck was in Lakeland, Florida, but it had been, um, you know, all the bag work and everything had been done by Dave Bonin of Bonafide Customs in Ohio. Mm-hmm. I called the guy. He had my truck on eBay. I said, look, man, I said, if you'll, if you'll take the, the, the ad down on eBay, I'll be at your house in the morning. First plane out of here. Well, back then, if you remember on eBay, everybody was really worried about negative comments or negative feedback. Yeah. You know, that was a big deal. Nobody wanted negative feedback. Well, he, he come up with an idea. He said, he said, Tim, what I'll do is I'm going to let the auction run. If it, if it reaches X amount of dollars, if it goes over 500 of what you're offering, I'll, I'll, I'll take a loss, deny the sale and you can come get it. You know, Mm -hmm. he said, but if it exceeds that much by a thousand, he's like, you got to understand, I got to let the truck go. I said, whatever you know let's just see what happens yep well sure enough sure enough he did he denied the sale and i you know when the sale when the sale denied i called him like three minutes after he said tim i've got a guy that's really upset with me that i've denied this sale i said don't worry about it i said like i said i said i'm on the phone right now on the other line booking a ticket i'll be out of here and I'll be at your front door. He said, I'll pick you up at the airport at, at, at uh, Orlando. Sure enough, I got uh, I got on the plane with a duffel bag. It had straight cash in it, a dealer tag, and a change of clothes. And I went to Orlando. I brought that truck back, drove it straight back to Nashville. I got to Nashville about 2 a.m. in the morning, and I called my buddy, woke him up. I was outside of his house in that truck. He's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm coming for my belt, you know, (laughs) and my truck was body dropped and his wasn't. And he's like, what's this? And I said, this is the belt winner, man. (laughs) You know, so (laughs) you're like, I'm coming for what's mine. (laughs) Yeah. But I had to, you know, at the time it was blue and white, but I had to stick to my guns. It had to have, it had to have the look that it's got now. So, so I contacted the original, you know, Radical Tops company, and I asked them if, they, if it was possible for them to make me this top. All, all this went down in like 07. So this has been a long time ago. And uh, they were, were kind of reluctant to do it. But I said, look, if y'all can make me this roof, 
soft top. I want it all. Tell me the price and just do it for me, you know? So, so I got the top coming and then, and then everything else, I tore the truck apart and then it had to be, you know, that Ferrari mix red tan interior. And it just, you know, it just had to, it had to be what I said it was going to be, you know? So it's, that's, that's where we ended up. So, so in the truck and we've shared some photos, we're going to share some more. You basically, you know, give us a quick overview of it. You know, obviously it's got the, you know, the top removed, but talk to us about some of the mods on it. Um, so that people kind of know visually, uh, w- you know, what you have. Well, the, the modifications and stuff and, and there again, being at Hunter's, you know, I, I was actually, I actually got to see Boyd a time or two. And I just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get to sit down and talk to him, but talking to him, all, all the classic Boyd cars, you know, he, he had a vision in any car that he built and it's supposed to be a clean, it's supposed to be a clean, obstructive view. You know, that's what makes it artwork. Everything, all the modifications are supposed to really go unseen. You know, so so that kind of just always stuck with me. So like on my truck, people don't really realize the reason why I got that Pathfinder grill in there. See, it's kind of a payback. When Ballistic come out, there was also a red hard body that come out with Ballistic. And it had that Pathfinder grill in it. And that's really why I have that Pathfinder grill. It's a throwback to that truck. Awesome. But I, but I went in there, you know, and, and I... I I changed the grill up quite a bit. I took all the headlight adjustment holes out of it and, and really just cleaned everything up. The bumper, you know, I went in there and um, took all the license plate holes out of it. Everything's smooth. The, um, it's got, uh, it's got front fenders, four wheel drive fenders on the front, but they're, I've got front fenders grafted into the bed, but they're flipped. Their wow. passenger pra- passenger front fender is driver's rear fender flip, but that that gives me the width that that Ferrari wheel. It's an actually a Ferrari um, three sixty Medina wheel with a factory frame placement, but that that bulge in that fender gives me the the space for that wheel to go in it, you know, and then um, the wiper cowl on it, smooth wiper cowl. And that thing, I can't say enough about M- Matt McClary at McClary's Metal Works. Mm-hmm. I, ca- I called Matt. He was in Alabama at the time. He still is. I was in Nashville. I called him. I said, Matt, can you make me a wiper cow? And he's like, well, I think I, think I still have the bucks for him around here. You know, so he said, but Tim, he said, you know, shipping it to you. I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's sheet metal. I don't know if it's going to get bent or anything. I said, just, you know, send it to me and, and we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. Uh huh. Jason, that wiper cow is the biggest piece of art on that truck because I took it straight out of the box, put it right on the truck. All I done to that, that piece that Matt made for me, I epoxied it, painted it. There's no filler in it. it. It was a straight, perfect fit. What you see today is what Matt made for me 400 miles away from where my truck was. You know, really? and that, people don't realize, I mean, that's straight artwork, you know, like it, it comes straight out of the box, test fit. I looked at it. It doesn't need anything, you know, so I, 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 I epoxied it, you know, sealed it, painted it straight metal. You know, yeah, and and see, and I think like it all came together perfectly in that truck because, like I said, it's when I look at it, I mean, it's an amazing mini truck. Others would look at it like what you kind of said and said, you know, it has the essence of the late eighties and nineties feel to it. It to mm-hmm. me, I me mean, personally, I wouldn't ever change anything about it at this point. Well, I've kind of I've kind of put myself in a in a position where, you know, I can't I, because it, it's so. It, it means so much to me that, you know, it's, it, 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 the visual of it won't change, but I, I've got, I've got some pretty big plans for it, but it's under the hood is all factory. You know, it's, it's a 52,000 mile truck. 
AC and heat work, work like a brand new truck. You know, I can get in it. It, it drives like a brand new truck, you know, but, uh, I, I've got some big plans for the under the hood. I, I want, I want under the hood to take on its own thing, you know, and, and I've got some big plans for that. So, and, and to be honest with you, Jason, under the hood is going to, going to start paying back to the low rider style. Oh, wow. You know? See, it's going to go full circle. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want, when the hood comes open, I want it to be its own thing. You know what I'm saying? Like it's its own thing. Got it. So, but, but yeah, I've got, I've got some ideas. So, like I said, it's going to go back to like a low rider era on, under the hood, well, you know, so. I like it. And, you know, you better hide a lot of those ideas because, you know, Mike the Mayor is talking about doing a cutaway engine, uh, chrome oh. uh, pistons, chrome crankshaft. I was like, Mike, I don't know. But, I mean, he said he's coming for everyone's jugular. I'm like, Mike, I mean, dude, you know, you already <laughs> hey, got some people out there that don't like you. So, I mean, you're really going to, you know, hurt some feelings, hey, you know. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm loving the ideas you're telling me, but we're still we're, – <laughs> We're still we're still on opposite sides of the field. Right. You know? Oh, I know. I'm just but, messing around. <laughs> but um that's cool. No, but see, to me that that's the cool thing. I love that, you know, obviously when we're younger, you know, we've had some stuff, we've sold, but you know, you're in it for the long haul. I, I think so often I hear guys and, and I know some people get bored with things and they trade and they flip and they sell and yeah. again, we've all kind of been there. We some of us are in different situations, but I think sometimes people will get rid of stuff little too quick and then they realize damn you know i had something nice or i you know i could have just built off what i had you know instead of having to go and it uh you know it could be disheartening to some people out there because they're just like damn you know now i don't have what i had but i wanted to kind of just go back on a couple things because we've talked about a lot um thinking back to the days at hunter's was there one thing that comes to mind, like a funny story? Um, I know you told me like, you know, when Boyd would fly in, you know, you told me a little bit about like, you know, seeing your first 20 inch wheel, like what's one memory that people might appreciate, you know, from you working at your time there? Well, th- there's really, there's really several. I mean, but, but really what I, what I thought was just like, it just, I, I just stood back and it was just kind of, it was just so interesting and, and just so, it was just interesting and it was just like something you just really couldn't grasp. It's like, I just can't, I can't get over what I just, but, but when Boyd, when Boyd would come from California out to Nashville, he, he would set up a rental. And at the particular time it was a Ford Windstar. But, but before, before he would fly out, he would have, he would have a set of Boyd wheels sent to hunters and we would go pick up the rental <laughs> put the boy wheels on the rental and he would drive it around while he was in town <laughs> we would take him back to the airport take the wheels off send them back to california and take the car back to hertz or wherever we got it <laughs> that was just so random dude you know i mean that's got i mean that's like early like late 80s early 90s straight pimping dude you know what i mean like hey man we're gonna throw it so we don't need to throw some D's on it. We're gonna throw some billets on it, man. <laughs> yeah, that that's unbelievable. Like player stat, it's like, and they wasn't even the cast billets either. They were the the straight billet, you know, with the with the the O ring center cap and mm-hmm. stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, oh man, he he came to play, man. He wasn't no joke, you know. <laughs> well, it but, was smart because you know him. You know, I'm sure when he pulled up at some of his vendors or you know whatever, they're just like, damn, dude, like he's rolling on his own wheels. Like it, it showed that, you know, the commitment that he had to his product, but it was like almost yeah. like a marketing campaign too. At the same time, I'm like, man, pretty genius. Just, just, I mean, just a, just a super interesting guy. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and certainly, certainly a legend, but he, he was a legend before he was, a, you know, he, he, was, he, yeah. he, he just had it. He, he just had it, you know? And, but I mean, you know, like I said, I, I didn't, you know, I just got to see, it was kind of like, you know, kind of in passing, you know, and it was just, you know, I got the eavesdrop on some of the conversations and I was just like, wow, you know, like, wow. And, and that was before all the show and stuff, man, that was, that was a long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago before really even nationwide cell phone coverage, you know, you were kind of explaining back in that day 
and it immediately took me back to you know going to Nopi ninety nine with the phone I had. You had to enter like a code <laughs> if you were going to roam because you know there was so much cloning and stuff going on. You're like, damn, what the hell? Right. You couldn't even really take right. your phone out of the your own city. But a lot of cool stories. I mean, I really. It's like a trip down memory lane, even though, like, you know, I never worked at Hunter's and, you know, I never got a chance to really, you know, talk to Boyd or whatever. I, to me, you know, reading the magazines and reading what Stillwell and McCormick and a lot of these guys, Courtney, uh, Lance as well, even at the trucking side, uh, Travis Nowak, you know, so many good dudes reading their editorials every month. I kind of felt like I was transformed into what they were living, right? I was living vicariously through them. And that's yeah. how information had transferred. So you kind of told us a cool story about that. Now, I also wanted to say congrats again to a Relaxed Atmosphere. Uh, about how long have you been in RA? Oh, man, that that's uh, – I was thinking back. I've been in RA since 2008. Nice. And, uh, and you know, it's – uh, people – how well, – I was thinking about this the other day. I, I hope everybody – if they're in a club or if they're not, you know, but I, I hope whatever club that you choose to roll with, I mean, I, I, I hope they feel about their club the way I feel about all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. and, and it's just, uh, you know, for me with, with RA, you know, starting to see the California trucks and the Texas trucks and, you know, it, it was just something, and I, I start when I was looking, I was like, now hold up a minute. I, I'm seeing Trendsetter here, and I'm seeing Trendsetter on several of these trucks, and then I'm starting to see this RA sticker. And, and for B, and to, you know, from, com, you know, coming up and going through, you know, it, it's just, it's just a, I, I don't take, it's just something that means a lot to me to actually be able to talk to some of them guys, you know, that, that had those trucks that I should have been paying attention in school, but yet I'm trying to figure out how they got their trucks that low. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's just so influential. It just means a lot to me. And and regardless of if you, if you're with negative camber or severed or whoever, I, I just, I, I hope, I hope you feel about that club the way I feel about RA and the respect I have for it and everybody in it, you know? So that, that's, that's about, that's about as good as I can. Boom, mic you know. drop right there. Yeah, and yeah. been around a long time. Obviously, at one of our favorite nationwide shows, Lone Star Throwdown, of course, 2021, back in February. Right. That, uh, right. that amazing event went down. You know, Lonnie Radar had uh, allowed for you guys to celebrate your 30th. I thought that was cool. So, 91 to uh, 2021, right? And you had some <laughs> OGs there, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. And. I truly feel that uh, I'm excited about Lone Star Throwdown 2022, and I would tell folks and encourage folks, you know, later this year, LoneStarThrowdown.com, that'll be updated, and we'll all be uh, anxiously awaiting to get our uh, ticket uh, for that. So, you know, we're thankful to Lonnie and Radar for what they do for the scene. But Certainly. Yeah, it's, it, it's just crazy. So it was good seeing you out there. I wanted to... Go back um, real quick to the Lowrider show that you went to. And I wanted to mm-hmm. remind people, just a week ago, we had the homie on from the 80s life, and we talked a lot about movie site locations. He talked about the boys in the hood site locations, which Ice Cube was in. But that era is so significant. I remember watching the um, the, the editorial, the direct, um, director commentary, uh, about a year ago, I think I went and I bought Boys in the Hood on uh, Blu-ray. Uh, it was like with the with the uh, I think it came with the digital copy. I think, and I was and I knew John Singleton had passed away, so I was watching the commentary, and he talked about someone had asked him about the the car that was in that, which obviously was different than the Ice Cube. It was a good day uh, video, right. but they they said you know right. you know whatever happened to the car or something. He goes, oh you know I had a chance to buy that car about you know, or shortly after the movie wrapped. And he said he really wished that he had purchased it because I think that car ended up in Japan. You know, there's a lot of low rider love there. Yeah. And yeah. And he was saying how it, the value in that car had increased like tenfold. You know what I mean? Oh, for, 
No doubt. Yeah, it's just a good era, isn't it? I mean, you think back to '91. There, you've got Ice Cube coming out, and the car that that you know that Tim had mentioned uh, with that lowrider coverage. And we'll share the some of the photos. One? The green one that was the the famous <laughs> one from it was a good day video. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just like, and and at the time, you know, just to see all that gold and that green, it's just it's just really nuts. It was just it's really stunning, you know, but uh. I mean, it. You know, looking back on it, you know, it's just, it's just mind blowing, really. You know, it's just different time, and 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 stuff was built a lot more primitive back then, you know. And it's, it's kind of cool to look back, and uh, like I was telling you about the speaker box in the back of it, you know, it's like, you know, that was that was at a that was at a uh, a very prestigious show. And it was like so primitive, that speaker box with those two 15s in it, you know, and it's just times were so simpler back then. But it's almost like the, those things had a different kind of soul in them. You know, it's like it's like they're soulful, like you can look at it and it's just got a it's got a different feeling when you look at it, you know. So but I mean, yeah. even the cars today, you know. Yeah, and and that that is it's it's funny how like you know old school BMX and there's mid school and then there's you know the current school right, but you know even with low riders and stuff that, it, it, the, you know there was that transformation. We've got a local guy actually that travels between here and California that we're gonna have on. I hope in the very near future to talk about low riders and I think um, for me and I've said this before on the podcast. You have to think back if you're a younger listener to that era of just you know, we that we grew up in. It was either a magazine, it was turn on the TV if you had cable. Now I lived in Lando Lakes and we had cable. Okay, so my pops had that. <laughs> we were rocking it. So we watched MTV. They played the Coolio video. They um yeah. they they played the Dre or excuse me you know well Dre let me ride one of my favorite videos right right uh, of course G Thang oh. had the riders you had Ice Cube you know Easy you know, always talking about six fours and everything but you had all of that and I think it really did shape a lot of us I mean I would watch that video or I would look at the Chronic tape and see Dre sitting in front of the blue uh, Impala and I was oh, always man. like I want to have you know, that, right. And, and my, you know, that of course got into mini trucks and then, you know, I do like the Lincolns and stuff, but I mean, that oh. I think really did shape our minds a lot. I think I, I, I mean, you know, the Impalas and stuff. I mean, I'm a huge fan of them. And, and I remember as a kid, you know, you know, there'd be two or three of us and, and somebody might say, Hey man, o over here in this next city, you know, that there's a car, you know, maybe a 62 Impala or something. And, uh, and, you know, we would hear it may have some spokes on it and stuff. And, and two or three of us, you know, we would, you know, tell everybody's parents that we're staying at whoever's house just so we could stay out all night and go search around and see if we could find these cars. And, and I remember doing that, you know, but uh, it was like, like, you know, I, I've always loved them and I would search them out. But it's like, like in the old music videos, like the old MC Breed videos, there ain't no future in your front yes. when they're rolling those, those 720s and stuff. Jason, I was always like, I want that top off, man. I want, I want that. Yeah, you know, that's it, what I want. Yeah, and it was true marketing. Uh, I follow Mike Miller of photography, and you know he's done every, you know he's he's photo or photographed everyone from the West Coast, even to like Criss Cross. And you know, and there's really? a, there's one of the Criss Cross videos where, you know, there was like a I think a, a lowered Amigo. I forget if it was on Juice, but yeah, you yeah. know they had they of course had a West Coast influence. They sampled on their last main album. You know they had. Um, you know, samples from Dre and from, you know, Biggie. Right. But if you look at some of their videos and their photo shoots or their their singles and their album covers, you know, there was low rider themes and stuff in it. And a lot yeah, of man. that I think was because of, you know, NWA, that late eighties into the nineties, and of course King T was a part of that, you know, let's go dipping. Right. I used to watch right. that video and just be like, dude, I don't know what dipping is, but I'm going. <laughs> well well, I mean it, even like you bring up King T, it's like it's like, uh, you know, Kid Frost was big at the Lowrider show. You yes. Know? Like that whole another thing is like being out there. It, it's the, it's the, it's that cultural music of, um, of Kid Frost that also paid, played a big part of that environment. Yeah. And know? DJ like, Laz like, was a part of it as well. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It's just crazy. Like, it's just, it's so much. It's like, you can't put it into words, 
you know? Well, but and I would encourage people, that's why I'm such a big uh, you know, fan and supporter of DJ Mays, uh, you know, our homie Jason Barbaglia, and oh, you know, for I'll sure. give him a little plug. If you haven't went out and downloaded Twitch, it's a free app. You can go, I mean, it's two, three times a week. Now, I sometimes miss it because I'm doing the podcast audio and this and that, but I, I've been to at least 80% of them, and, you know, the old school music that he spins, you know, he, he brings in a little bit of rock, a lot of hip-hop heavy there, of course, but a lot of that, the music goes hand-in-hand hand with the car culture and, and really the trucks, and I was, as we've established, even with some of the music videos, you just mentioned one where you had uh, mini trucks in the, the videos, I want to give a huge shout out to one of my severed brothers in the Jason Aldean. I, I'm not a huge country fan, but I know right. the 1994 song. 1994. Yeah. There's uh, right. severed trucks in that video, and right. you know that was yeah. only I don't know 15 years ago, maybe ish, something like right. that. Yeah. If if yeah. that long ago, so you know minis have been all the way back, you know, from the late 80s, early 90s, and videos all the way up till you know almost current. It's really so weird that you know. You know, people that there's people that you really wouldn't associate with like mini trucks or that time, like, you know, like Jason Aldean or any like you never know. You know, they were kids like us going on spring break, you know, back when back when cruising was big. And, you know, they had to come across some bad, some bad little trucks, you know, with the hot girls in them. And they're like, that dude's doing it, you know, so (laughs) You never know who who it made an impact on, you know. It's real so, talk, man. Oh, yeah, man. We've talked about so much, man. I, I I knew I'd have a smile on my face on this for this interview because basically, I mean, we talked about everything from the infancy, how you got involved, of course, low riders, your time at Hunters, which I think is an amazing place. We'll talk more about that in the future. Uh, of course, your mini truck addiction and things like that, but. You know, thinking back to all the stuff that maybe you had in your head that you wanted to cover, was there any kind of subject or anything that we may have left out or anything else that you wanted to share, homie? Well, I mean, it's just, man, I just, I want to say, man, I just appreciate, you know, you guys having me on. I can't say enough about, you know, we all, and anybody listening to this has a passion for this. And I just, I appreciate the time and effort that you and Mike and everybody put into this. And I just want to say how much I appreciate all the promoters for giving us a place to go and meet up. And uh, let's just keep doing it. You know, I mean, I don't know. You might have to have me on and, and we might make better memories. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, man. Like, yeah. Like, like we've been there, done that. What I'm saying, let's, but what we got, What what's next, man? Like, what are we going to do this weekend? We're taking over the <laughs> world, man. Let's do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. But no, yes, it, sir. It, it's good to have the conversations and reminisce because I think it's good to remember like where we came from, right? In terms of this love, this passion, and I think we've all established that. You know, to me, what's important is you don't look at one type of genre and go, "Oh, it's dumb." You know, we don't all maybe agree with like these stance cars or you know these whatever squat trucks, whatever they call them these days, but. You know, I kind of look at it and say, I remember, and people still say this to us today. It's like, why would you lower a truck? Or, you know, back in our my early days, I remember seeing Isuzu's cruising around, and they just had, you know, torn up suspension, and things were bouncing. And you're like, why would you want to drive and you know, shitty suspension? But, you know, you're you're only that certain age group once in your life, right? You know, 16, 17, 18, 20 years old. And everybody, right. every generation is trying to outdo the next generation. Now, some of us from our era, we probably laugh and go, okay, we're on the da- they're on the downfall, right? Some of these other generations. But I, I think the same, the folks that came before us looked at us going, dude, why would you like lower a truck? You know, why, right? And I think obviously that question is still asked, but I just would spin all that and say, look, man, you know, we're all passionate about certain things. You know, you might go to a show and you may not appreciate something as much as the next thing, but, you know, don't right. hate on it. You know, just move on. Um, and what you said, right. I think, rings true for all show promoters. What's important is that, you know, show promoters can't do what they do without a, an eclectic mix of vehicles. Uh, you know, well, if the, bikes if the and everything. Vehicles you know? aren't, if, the, if the vehicles aren't there, the people aren't going to come. So, I mean, you know, there has to be the draw you know i mean it, it's financial you know i mean but i mean if it, it take it takes all parts to make it work you know so you know the promoters 
like I said, you know, I can't say enough of appreciation of the things they do. But if the trucks and the vehicles don't show up, the spectators aren't coming. So then, you know, then they're going to start dying off. But it, it takes all those things to make it work and make it be able to continue to happen. And, and like as you were speaking on, you know, a lot of times I'll have an older person or something. And that now as just having a birthday yesterday, I, I'm not young anymore. But some of the older people that don't really understand when they see my truck, you know, I, I try to describe to them. I'm like, look, if you really get down and look at some of these custom mini trucks and these custom build trucks, they're no different than the influential hot rodders of the 40s and the 50s. You know, some of the some of the amazing work that's done their their works of art, you know, and they and it puts them in a perspective where they start. They kind of they kind of see it a little different, you know, and and another thing, Jason, is, is, you know, people, people that might have an under construction truck. You know, I, I've talked to several of them here lately and, and I know I know the struggles of building something like that and what it takes. But I'm like I tell them, you know, under construction this year is best of show next year. There you go. You know? Hey, I like the way you think, man. And, and and that's when people stand back, just like Daryl Poe. I mean, look at his truck, man. Like, geez, you know, like, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's a work of art. What okay, can we say? can't blow Daryl's head up too much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, DP, he's <laughs> the man, and his truck is, it's next level shit, dude. And, and just like, you know, Aaron Cottrell, like all the airbrush work, I mean, it's just, it, it, it's it's artwork. It, it's, it's beyond a vehicle at that point. You know what I'm saying? And And those are just just a few you know there's so many out there and they all they all have their you know they all have their special traits you know and those traits come from the builders so yeah and, and just, there's and there's certain things that are going to remind us like you know a lot of us talk about ballistic and you know we know ballistics no longer a truck so to speak you know that original truck yeah. pat you know kind of dismantled yeah. it like doc did with a with a delorean remember and he said i took it back to my <laughs> workshop and dismantled it but we, we right. know Pat. I wonder if Pat was thinking about the space time continuum, you know, when he dismantled the <laughs> thing. But, you know, much love to Pat Nickel, great dude. But, you know, in all seriousness, like when you really break it down, there's different vehicles that bring us back to a certain era. Some that were the baddest build, some that maybe didn't run. You know, you just never know. But it's the same thing with video exactly. games. You know, I can think of some shitty video games that bring me back to my childhood. Like, Dude, I tried playing that game one time on NES, the Home Alone game, I think it was, or Bart versus the Space Mutants, and I was like, man, I can't even get past the fucking first level. But I'll play that right now because it brings me back to my childhood. So That's right. That's right. It's all about, you know, hey, man, we're all living this life, man. Let's do it with a smile on our face. Yeah, you know? brother. Like, like, what do we, you know, heck, man, good times and good friends, and let's let's go, you know. That's, that's what it's about, you know, so – that's my boy Tim Davis right here, and you can follow him. It's uh, T underscore Davis, D A V I S 7 4 on Instagram. Yeah, man, dude, it's a lot of truth to what you're saying, bro. And I'm just excited about the future and seeing what uh, what you got up your sleeve for the engine bay, bro. It's, you know, well, we're going to get it there. But, uh, man, I appreciate you guys, Jason. And uh, thanks for, thanks for, you know, having me on. And, and uh, let's see what's coming. Let, let's do what's next, you know? So. Yeah, man. Well, listen, stay on the rise, as we always say, and uh, we'd love to uh, to try to uh, link up with you and some of the contacts you have in the future and, and maybe talk about yes, hunters sir. and, and more stuff, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, homie. We got you. Peace. Hands on my balls with the doc, not giving a fuck. We bad luck. Here, dick the suck. Your hoe get tasted with the villain DNA when she ready to chase it. I'm on another level than y'all. Niggas dressed up like they Pope John Paul. This that new motherfucking formula, y'all. Fuck the dress code, nigga. Come and smash the walls. Post it up, hoes choked up. Dick too big, bout to tear they throat up. Red, give a fuck, you axin' to get cut. Comp town started this shit, so nigga what? We all fucked up, but well, y'all lucked up. Nigga brown nosing, drop this nigga shit, had a whole flame frozen. Whole game dozing, in it for something while y'all bitches, y'all in it for nothing, nigga. Do not attempt to adjust your radio. There is nothing wrong. It's a must, I get my hands on some dead presidents. Can't be hesitant, cause the game goes on. Do not attempt to adjust your radio. There is nothing wrong. 
It's a must, I get my hands on some dead presidents Can't be hesitant cause the game goes the fuck with Ice Cube, you got the shit talk, big talk, rip walk, bang hard, run yards, flip cars. Cause you fucking with millionaires, big stars. Only cocking a grip will make our dicks hard. I come through when I handle my fitness like a goddamn menace. Niggas think I eat spinach, cause you need a dentist. Whenever I finish, it's the Greenwich with a gang of lieutenants. Westside Connect Sean is the campaign. Niggas trying to run shit, pull a hamstring. I'ma do the damn thing, baby, do the damn thing. Damn, ass busting out them pants, I can't. Stand it, ran it like the animal planet The kind of nigga that'll take Janet for granted Ice Cube got the shit that you blew up on Blew up on, got a lawsuit at home It's a shark in a swimming pool Bad news coming through on them 22s And I'm hunting you out Little kids got the run in the house I'm dirty like the south With a gun in your mouth Click, click, nigga bang bang For that bang bang Nigga get his bottles insane And Saddam Hussein Give a fuck if he got him a gang He out of my range Giving shit stains When I get brains, nigga uh. Attempt to adjust your radio There is nothing wrong It's a must I get my hands on some dead presidents Can't be hesitant cause the game goes on Do not attempt to adjust your radio There is nothing wrong It's a must I get my hands on some dead presidents Can't be hesitant cause the game goes on It is already It is my niggas We going back to the beginning of dude Like for real In the midst of this old school shit, uh, our young gangsters still bring the pain. Doggy dog bring the pain. Easily I approach yeah. the microphone with a pocket full of dope. Yeah. The king of the coast, I'm rocking the boat, oh. stroking your folks and loking with locs. Baby boy got smoke. <laughs> Nigga, what up? Nigga, what up? I need cheese, paper, bread, and butter. Nut up and cut up the beef. I got a 44 piece that'll shut up the. My niggas gon' floss to this, my cripped out homeboys gon' walk to this Creep to the spizzot and stash my nizzot, then call the dizzot, you know we got it blizzot Pop right back on your monkey ass, then cock the glock back on your funky ass Been a long time, I shouldn't have left you, let's get loot like Snoop nephew Six still attempt to adjust your radio, there is nothing wrong It's a must, I get my hands on some dead presidents, can't be hesitant cause the game goes on Attempt to adjust your radio. There is nothing wrong. It's a must. I get my hands on some dead presidents. Can't be hesitant because the game goes on. Here we go. Some of this millennium shit from the DOC, nigga. And as long as I'm fucking with niggas like Ice Cube, Brand, the motherfucking villain, Snoop Dogg. The motherfucking doctor Baby, number one stunner, nigga Jazzy Faye Nate Dogg and the Kingpin X to the motherfucking Z Six two My motherfucking silverback family Motherfuckers so as long as I keep making these records, this is what you gon' get. The shit. Make that.